Okay, welcome back to another episode of Bodies, Barbells and... Bagels! We are up to season two, episode number 20 today. And um, we are not going to do our for him and her tip today because we've got a special guest joining us. And we just want to get straight into it because it's going to be a really big episode. It's all tips. Yes, and it's going to be an awesome one because it's on a completely different topic to stuff that we normally do, but definitely ties back into health and fitness. So I'm going to let Sean into our guest today, who is a sleep and respiratory specialist. So, scientist. But has way more accolades than that. We always have to so. have scientist on the end. Mm. Like, we introduce ourselves as scientists when we talk about <laughs> anything. I feel, like, I feel like anyone can be a specialist these days yeah. if they slap a specialist on it, you know? Yeah. So anyway, lots of accreditation. So. A lot. So we have uh, Martin McPhillamy. He's a fellow geezer, fellow Englishman, fellow POM, as you Aussies say. I wasn't going to announce your name because I knew I would fuck up your surname. So yeah, I'm like, very, oh, Sean, uh, you nailed it. Rolls off the tongue. McPhillamy. McPhillamy. Perfect as well. Perfect. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you very much. Mm. Conversation's brilliant. So yeah, like I said, a uh, cardiorespiratory and sleep scientist. Um... From the UK, he is a UK and Australian accredited healthcare scientist specializing in sleep and respiratory sciences. He has a master's of research in sports sciences, a master's of clinical sciences, and has been in the healthcare industry for six years or more already. How do we go? Yeah, thanks for the introduction. Um, It's great to be here to chat to you guys. Sleep plays an important role in what you guys do, and it's often Mm. overlooked. the importance of it in, in, in the, well, why we sleep and the health industry. And at the moment, we're having a bit of issue in the fact that actually Australians, there's about 40% of Australians actually sleep deprived. Oh, wow. Mm. Okay. And it's causing a lot of health issues. Yep. Um, and, you know, the people that you actually see in terms of trying to change body composition and improve strength and improve you know, hypertrophy, Sleep is one of the most imp- important things Absolutely, out there. Absolutely, yeah. You mm. feel like shit when you haven't slept and all of a sudden yeah. you've got to squat 200 kilos. And there, there's not a, a single physiological comp- you know, component in the body that sleep doesn't have an effect on. Mm. Mm. So it's really important that we vitally get that sleep. So cool. you're not about that mm. life of like, you know, just grind, just, you know, train as many hours as you can a day yeah. and that's going to get your optimal results so we can squash that. It's and very two hours sleep. Time. Yeah. Bugger it. <laughs> Definitely. The, 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 no, not having enough sleep is uh, one of the biggest contributors to, to overtraining. Yeah. yeah. And Absolutely. resulting in injury and yeah. you know, people having to drop out of competitions, mm. dropping out of uh, competition. Uh, no, being an athlete and it's the worst thing for us. Really. Absolutely. Yeah. We always yeah. say that, well, I believe anyway, that there's not really overtraining, it's under recovering. Yeah, or poor yeah. lifestyle. Poor yeah. lifestyle, not enough calories and definitely not enough sleep. You look at someone like a triathlete who can train up to six, seven hours a day and they're surviving and they're thriving. Still- and then you've got someone who trains for an hour a day and thinks they're overtraining. Oh, and it's like, let's really look at the variables yeah. here. So, yeah, we want to get into, I guess, the effects on more so performance, overall health, um, and, yeah, just some different questions from a variety of listeners. Mm. So we have had so many questions, so thank you so much for sending them in. And really, I guess we're going to let you get into the start of it and just yeah. more so explaining what sleep what is, is, the types sleep? of sleep. Yeah. Why do we sleep, the structure of sleep? We're going to go through all of this. So I'll basically fire off some questions at you and see sure. what you got. Yeah. We find it really weird when we get intake questions from clients and they say, I sleep eight hours every night. It's like, you're a rarity. <laughs> yeah. You know? Yeah. The thing is reported subjective sleep duration. Yeah. Is one of reporting the most, their diet. <laughs> yeah. It's one of the most... Uh, <laughs> Underrated, underestimated yeah. uh, yeah. phenomena, and it's the issue we have as a sleep scientist is that the majority of the research is done on patients who are it's their their raw reported sleep. Mm. But who really knows? Because at the end of the day, the, the trackers are not that great. We're going yeah. to talk about that's your question. Yeah, yeah, and we'll talk about a little bit the on quality, them, those yeah. later. But then it's hard to get people into the labs that have to get wired up and yeah. look at the brain waves and get them into a foreign place because people don't want to you know, no. do that research. And then, you get, yeah, and then you get white coat syndrome where things have changed yeah. because you're in a yeah. lab. Yeah. Well, yeah, well, interestingly. You've got wires on you when you're sleeping, like something like a yeah. natural thing. Yeah. There's a, there's a, um, a common concept and when you first move into a different room that says like a bit of an evolutionary process that half of our brain actually stays awake because it's a you know we're in a foreign place yeah. and it's actually like a protective mechanism yeah, yeah. so I we, like that when we travel and we go on holiday i feel terrible. like someone's yeah. gonna 
burst in, so I'm half in sort of fight mode. Yeah, yeah carries a stick out I have a stick bit. next to the bed called Reginald. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and if that relates to you know someone who's going to go on stage and they have to go to a hotel the day before, yeah. it's probably better to actually book it two days in advance. Uh, I tell my clients three or four days, especially yeah. international five oh, days, like, you yeah. know, because you've just gone like, and competed in London. Like, yeah, look yeah. at the time difference. Like, yeah. That's something yeah. that we can talk about in terms of uh, getting over jet lag. It depends on whether you're traveling yeah. east, whether you're traveling west. And, yeah. uh, we'll get onto that later as well. <laughs> One of the questions. We're just jotting down more and more as we go through. So I guess let's start off with the most important one. Why do we sleep? Why do we need it? Because Sean hates it. I fucking hate sleep. It's so boring. <laughs> like, and I honestly think that's the resistive thing of my brain and why I don't sleep. Whereas well. I'm like, I'm yay. So <laughs> yeah. That's it. And there's this conception out there that people don't need that much sleep. And the people, especially people who are in business. Yeah. So I can survive yeah. in four hours. I can go, and, yeah. go, go, go. But if we look at it you know, as, a, as an evolutionary um, uh, practice, is sleep has been uh, a part of evolution for about 4.4 million years. Mm. And over that time span, it started with mammals just being quiet. And it's a survival mechanism. Because at night time, we're not the best at hunting. We're yeah. not the best at uh, you know, going out there. So we've got to be as quiet as possible all the monsters come out at night exactly and that's it it's like we we were we evolved to actually go into the state of really relaxed consciousness and bringing down the heart rate and bringing down the uh, the blood pressure so mm. that we can kind of hide away from this uh, from the predators and it's quite interesting because obviously nowadays we're having you know food is obtainable easily mm. whereas food used to be scarce so we used to have to use conserve our energy to go out there and hunt down for food sleep more yeah to sleep so we'd sleep yeah. more to then find no, to go out and find the uh, to find the food but now food is so relatively relatively available but we're actually uh, sleeping less and less as well mm. so we're consuming more food so we're consuming more food but we're sleeping less because we're, we're kind of like oh well if I don't sleep I'm just going to eat more because it'll yeah. give me energy and you know so the one theory is the evolutionary theory or the yep. adaptive theory and the second theory is uh, the, you know, the, the energy conservation and actually when we sleep uh, the metabolic rate drops around about 10% mm. so it's a reasonable drop and then the third one which is the most researched is the re- recovery and risk restorative effect of sleep and that's um, you know, how the brain is actually during the day and Professor Matthew Walker suggests that um, wakefulness is actually low level brain damage and then when mm. we sleep we're actually clear- especially these days <laughs> uh, we're actually clearing out all the waste and all the metabolic products from, mm. from the brain and the body yep. during the sleep and it's actually uh, the majority of our anabolic processes occur dur- uh, during sleep mm. so in fact only some of them occur during sleep so when growth hormones yep. are still these things yeah. yeah yeah so you get in females roughly about 70 or 80 percent of your growth hormone yeah. is released in your sleep yeah males it's a little bit and less so, yeah, i notice it in female clients that struggle to grow Mm-hmm. And it's always the ones that is, you know, a big part of it, component of it, one variable, sleep deprived, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Certainly, yeah. Yeah. And then there's the memory and the learning function and uh, emotional regulation as well. Mm-hmm. So as we go through the sleep phases, we'll talk about what they mean and what um, each one does, but particularly learning. Mm. memory yeah. probably it cements it into the brain when you sleep it does that's from short term to long term and that's yeah. probably why like I don't know about you guys but when I don't get enough sleep sometimes I feel like I'm hungover or drunk yeah. you know when you get that kind of like drunk mm. fog where you're like and I don't barely drink but it takes me back to when I was 18 and you wake up and you're like <laughs> what day is it like you know it's that same yeah, sort of that it's brain. like your brain's just fuzzy from that lack of sleep that's it and if we don't get that uh, specifically the the, the uh, stage three in the REM sleep is our ability to learn and even control our emotions is is, mm. is the first thing to go you notice someone's cr- sleepy they get cranky, cranky. Well, it's like, from- yeah it's like mums that haven't slept because they've had a newborn and they're yeah. just like on the verge of tears for that you know yeah. first couple of months like so yeah. what I'll do is I'll take you through the you know the stages of yeah, sleep, cool. and, then, sleep. And, and then uh, discuss what uh, what happens in those phases of sleep. So obviously we've got wakefulness, mm-hmm. and then there's two phases: non-REM and there's REM. Mm-hmm. And within non-REM, you've got three stages essentially. You've got stage one, which is kind of your uh, you're semi-conscious, you're aware of what's going on around you. If someone called your name, you'd wake up. Mm-hmm. And then you've got stage two. And in stage two, we start to see uh, what's called sleep, sleep spindles. And they're like a little burst of um, electrical activity in our brain. And these K-complexes, which are large uh, um, activity, electrical activities in our brain. And what they're associated with is actually like the downloading of the information of the memory and storing it onto the hard drive. Mm. And then you get stage three, which is your deep sleep. 
And during this phase, actually, electrical activity really slows down, and we call it slow wave sleep, and that's really a restorative sleep. And that's where we see the majority of the growth hormone um, mm-hmm. increases in testosterone releases. Yep. In, in, that's where we want to be. Essentially, yeah, really, really want to do. And that occurs more in the, the first half of the night. Mm-hmm. So as you first initially go to sleep, you'll find that you, you tend to go into stage one and then stage two and then stage three, and you'll get a large amount of proportion of stage three. And then you'll tend to go into what's called REM sleep, and that's the, the, the rapid eye movement. So. On a, uh, on a recording device, so we're actually looking at the electrical activity of the brain. It looks very similar to wakefulness, but we actually see flickers of the, uh, the eyelids and our body. I'm sure our dog, Buffy, is constantly in rim. Yeah. So, <laughs> so if you see the dogs... flickering yeah. eyes, yeah. If you see the dogs and their eyes flicking around yeah. and, their, and their legs starting to move yeah. like they're, they're dreaming. It's Going our, for a run. Yeah. It's our dream state sleep, is, yeah. that, is that REM sleep. And... That is um, associated with uh, essentially a motor control, so learning new motor patterns. So if you're teaching someone you know, some Olympic lifting and they go through that phase 10, 20 times a day, yeah. if they're not able to get REM sleep, then actually their, their ability to actually learn that skill is reduced. So that's why when we give clients training feedback and they're good for one session and then they send you a video and you're like, that's fucking awful. Do you not sleep this week? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Maybe, your that's, maybe that's the question we should start <laughs> yeah. asking. Yeah. yeah. And it, it's, it's, it's pretty interesting because with, with, with REM sleep that happens in, the, in you know, the early hours of the morning and that's when you tend to dream the most. Yeah. Okay. And the, the body's completely paralyzed apart from the diaphragm mm. the heart, essentially. That's a question you need to ask. Write that down. Why some people remember their dreams and some don't. I don't dream. Like, I'm sure I do dream, but I really don't. We'll put that down because we'll stay on Come back to that. (laughs) I think you and I are similar because I don't remember much of my dreams either. Yeah. Yeah. So that's interesting. Okay, so let's go back through. So the stages. So you've got the three stages. First REM and then you've got your... Non-REM. Non-REM. Stages one, two and three. And then REM, which is rapid eye movement sleep. And you tend to get less less and less uh, REM sleep. as, as you go on but the interesting thing is is that when you get you know, sleep restriction or sleep deprivation is that initially the body will uh, remove REM sleep or mm-hmm. REM sleep will be there'll be less but then the, the body is trying to uh, or the, the mind is trying to con- actually protect the brain so then that slow wave sleep which is, cre- is crucial for exercise recovery and, and restoration the body kind of gets rid of that and, mm. then, and prefers REM sleep over the, over the rest of it okay so um, which one is the most important for recovery? The third? Slow wave sleep. sleep. The slow, okay. yeah, yeah. yeah, so in slow wave sleep, that's when you're getting the releases of growth hormone. Um, and obviously then growth hormone leads to the secretion of IGF. Yeah. Um, Gains. Yeah, essentially mm-hmm. yeah. Pr- proliferation of satellite cells, yeah. the mTOR pathway, all, all, yeah. that, all that sort of stuff. And sleep, lack of sleep in, over you know, chronic Poor sleep can lead to, um, yeah, like I say, reductions in slow wave sleep. Yeah. So then we, you know, people who are only getting less than six hours sleep might only have 30 to 40 minutes of uh, deep sleep in the whole, mm. whole mm. period. Well, according to my Fitbit tracker, <laughs> it says I don't get a lot of deep sleep. But mm. we'll get onto that. We'll get onto the trackers. So I hear um, people talk about like a sleep cycle. Mm-hmm. Per se, from start to finish, and I'm literally throwing this out there, but they always talk about the 90 minute rule yeah. from start to finish. Yeah. What's the, the deal with that? Explain so, that. that's going through those phases. <laughs> yeah. So, typically, a sleep cycle is 90 minutes, like okay. you say. It take, from take, if you're going from stage one all the way through to REM sleep, and then once we come out REM sleep, we tend to go to uh, maybe go back to stage two, then back into the stage three, and then back to maybe stage one, and then we might get an arousal and wake up. And then we'll flip back into stage two, back to three again. And this cycle over 90 minutes, and as I said previously, you'll get more slow wave sleep at the beginning and REM sleep mm. towards the latter part of the night. Do we have a specific number of sleep cycles we're supposed to get, or is it literally? I mean, I think it's like 90 minutes. Yeah, yeah, there's like five to six, yep. so you're aiming, aiming to get roughly seven to, to nine hours of sleep a day. And I think there's only 1% of the population that can get less than seven hours of sleep without having performance effects or mm. you know, mm. health effects. I remember Jay Cutler said, Saying that he would um, function absolute best on consistently getting five hours sleep. Really? So he need all, he's, he says as long as I always get five hours sleep, I'm fine. When he sleeps more or slightly less, okay. and then that's when he And these on. are the outliers, and that's exactly. Like anything, he's the one percent you know? of yeah. the one yeah. percent. Yeah. And that's it. You know, the likes of Jay Jay Cutler. He doesn't have to worry about 
about IGF. Doesn't have to worry about anything to do with really. Yeah. Like, Maybe they Oh no, I've got different. my lack of <laughs> yeah. growth hormone this week. Yeah. Yeah. I think it'd be different if we some put some natural athletes <laughs> into that mix. So yeah. But that's probably the reason why he has less sleep because doesn't probably, need it. Doesn't I mean, I don't know the research in exogenous testosterone or growth hormone, but it might actually reduce the amount of slow wave sleep that you actually need. Yeah. So therefore, you don't need as much sleep as a. You know, but yeah. We'll get Jay Cutler on. Jay, if you're listening. The anabolic effect on sleep would be interesting, yeah. but you know, again, they're not going to do studies on it, so yeah. like we Exogenous can just do, versus we can ignore that one. So yeah. let's talk about um, most common sleep issues. Like, why do people mainly come to you? What are you common? Um, I mean, in my role, exactly my role, it would be uh, sleep disordered breathing. But mm-hmm. I will we'll go there in a second. Yeah, we'll talk the, about um, sleep apnea as well. Yeah, we'll, we'll discuss that in a moment. But the the most common issue is stress. Yeah, uh, stress, anxiety, worry can't stop the brain from switching, um, off. switching off, and mm-hmm. that's one of the most common reasons. And uh, I suppose if we talk a little bit about what's uh, wakefulness and what sleep is and uh, wake, wakefulness during a day is essentially uh, uh, the the excitatory uh, neurochemistry in, in the brain is 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 in further balance than the inhibitory uh, neurochemistry and what people get when they get stressed they get increases in acetylcholine get increases in you know, glutamate and serotonin that can actually make the brain almost awake mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and then it's it's those uh, neuropeptides that we, we, we're we able to get rid of and that's just causing this sort of constant thing of going all the neurons in the brain are just firing, firing, firing and we have to be able to uh, uh, deactivate the sympathetic nervous system and kind of activate the parasympathetic mm. service and, nervous system to be able to relax so that's how insomnia you know, in, in mm. a way is, is, is brought around about and insomnia is actually the fear of not getting enough sleep to be able to accomplish <laughs> yeah. the, the task you need to the next day yeah so it's, it's, it's actually the worry about getting to sleep that like, keeps people up. <laughs> scared of sleep. Yeah. It is. Yeah. And it becomes this vicious cycle for people. And, mm. and the most common treatment for that, or the best treatment for that, is actually cognitive behavioral therapy yeah. um, for insomnia, which is a psychological therapy. Yeah. yeah. And it's, Dealing with the underlying issues. Yeah. 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 The underlying worry, the anxiety, the yeah. yeah. Well, That's I overthinking. Had, I had severe asthma as a kid. So, and. Where he's gonna die when he went to sleep. Well, it literally was, yeah. So, because I was allergic to literally everything dust and hay fever and dogs. Bubble, bubble and, boy. And well, I was a bubble boy, yeah. So, I would wake up in the middle of the night and be like not breathing. So, I didn't yeah. up in hospital. So, that's probably, why, that's probably why I have shit sleep. And regardless of the issue that I see a patient for, is, is they, they've always got that little bit of, oh, yeah, but I'm still struggling to sleep. I'm still struggling to get to sleep. Is because you, you get such a bad association with sleep, mm. even if you've got another issue. Start to pre stress that you're yeah. just going to have another yeah. bad night and another bad night yeah it's a habit at the end of the day it's a behaviour like, yeah, like anything there's a psychological aspect and a physiological aspect and the more you focus on something the more your brain's going to go towards that negative emotion than going I'm going to get a great night's sleep tonight yeah. you know so like when you're riding a bike and you see a tree and all of a sudden you start veering towards the tree that's it yeah, yeah. so that would be one the, the, the most common cause of, of sleep issues is stress and yeah. uh, which then leads on to to insomnia um, and then you've got the sleep disorder breathing which is obstructive sleep apnea yeah. for you know, the, so many bodybuilders yeah, are struggling big guys. with this you know, yeah. I, I was going through it when I was 100 plus I have never had it with one of my female clients no it always seems to be the big maybe big over, over, really overweight ones but yeah the big dudes who are 100 plus kilos and whatever or everyone's just getting those machines now. Yeah. You sound like Darth Vader going to sleep. That's it. And obstructive sleep apnea is essentially where the airways are collapsing on top of each other when you're sleeping. And that's causing issues with getting air in. So then you get you know, an, oxygen, an oxygen level start to fall down. The body then reacts to that with you know, release of stress hormones, catecholamines and uh, you know, adrenaline, noradrenaline. And you get this kind of, all of a sudden, a, gasp and wake up. Mm. It's because the body doesn't like to be asleep. And your brain starts to become deprived of oxygen. And that leads to what we call fragmented sleep. So rather than going through those phases of stages one to three, yeah. it's cutting those blocks up. It's not quality. Yeah. yeah. And because of that reason, then people don't get the quality of sleep and they feel knackered. Do you then start again at stage one? Um, stage one gets less and less. You only have about twenty percent of your whole sleeps in stage one. So you might, one. So you might yeah. So you might go. You might start stage one. You might go back into you know, into uh, stage two, but then you'll have an arousal from having an apnea, let's say. Yeah. You're going for wakefulness, but then you might go straight back to stage two again. And it really does become random when you've got obstructive sleep apnea. So what is that actually caused by without sounding, you know, with the, more so with the guys that we're talking about in that population? Is it just from the sheer mass and their bodies aren't used to that and it's sort of 
affecting the airways or like, yeah so yeah. It, it's really multifactorial and they really, they haven't pinpointed mm. a um, a reason for it the most common issue is obesity so mm. the, the, the more weight you have on your neck the more likely it is to collapse because that yeah. muscle around your oh, it's definitely the guys in their off season there's yeah. more so than the contest prep know. phase no yeah. you're fine when you pushed about 105 you were starting yeah. to struggle yeah. with it yeah i mean there's a direct correlation between bmi and yeah. and um and, and obstructive sleep apnea regardless of muscle mass mm. and then it's all down to jaw, jaw structure yeah and you know, the, the size of the airway itself so you've got big adenoids you've got big tonsils and that can crowd the airway so then there's only a small amount of um, room to, for it to collapse mm. and it doesn't have to be a full collapse you have what we call hypopneas which are actually a reduction in the airway but enough to affect your oxygen levels yeah okay. and that can then stimulate your, you know, your brain to go on a second i don't want to be asleep anymore yeah and if say you've got that plus a little bit of body fat plus this and that then yeah. obviously it's going to have a bit yeah. of an impact so so what can you do in those situations if you're a bodybuilder yet you're sleeping awfully is it just a case if you have to use the machines? Oh, you've got to lose a bit or of body fat? Of, yeah. It depends on um, the, the severity. Mm. So if you've got moderate to severe sleep apnea, most likely chances that you're going to have to use a CPAP machine, mm -hmm. which is a, a machine, a device that blows air and generates a pressure in your airway and keeps your airways open. If it's to do with structures of the jaw, then you can get splints to hold your jaw open. Mm. But I, I've got an interesting theory about... Uh, stress and um, uh, how that is actually causing sleep apnea itself mm. and there's been some really interesting research animal research that's come out recently where they uh, you know the genetically mutated mice to, to, to be leptin resistant or okay. to remove leptin from these mice and uh, they obviously obviously over consume food because they're not satiated and they actually become lazy because leptin is also a regulator of um, of, uh, of our uh, neat which we were talking about today. Yeah. <laughs> um, he watches my Instagram. <laughs> You're famous. <laughs> but when they calorie restrict these these mice, they still got obstructive sleep apnea. Mm -hmm. So there's a theory that actually um, le leptin is a ventilatory stimulant. So interesting. We start when we sleep rather than using uh, a CO2 as a as a um, you know, a driver to, to, to breathe which we would whilst we're awake mm -hmm. and we're moving this leptin is actually a control of our breathing mm -hmm. okay. now in people who have a sleep a short sleep duration they typically have increased levels of cortisol because they get increased sympathetic nervous activation and that then causes you know, increased hpa act adrenal glands activating yeah. acth all that blah 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 and um that causes increase in cortisol. Cortisol is actually a, a counter regulatory hormone to leptin. So when yeah. you have high levels of cortisol, your leptin tends to be low. Yeah. So with in, patient, in patients with short sleep duration, you actually get chronic levels of low leptin. Mm -hmm. And leptin is a, a ventilatory stimulant when we're falling asleep. Then we're going to get what's called a typical, a small amount of hypoventilation. And over time, I think over 10, 15 years, we're actually starting to see a weakness in these pharyngeal muscles around the airway, which then is causing them to collapse. So we're not seeing it per se straight away. We can't say it's because you're obese, yeah. but if you've got someone who's you know, a businessman surviving on four or five hours of sleep at night. And overweight. Overweight. Mm -hmm. uh, not even particularly overweight and not non-obese, because yeah. I'm seeing more and more non-obese individuals get um, sleep apnea. But really stressed individuals. Really stressed yeah. individuals, low, level, low sleep duration. Mm -hmm. And they just don't value sleep. Yeah, it's not a priority. It's not. Them, yeah. And again, because of the cortisol levels, the low leptin, I think over over real time, they're just getting a weakness in this airway, and that's yeah. what's causing them to. Just the muscles are relaxing, and yeah, that's it. Yeah. 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 Working as efficiently. Well, so hugely multifaceted hormone. I think yeah. leptin. It is. Is that something you're really going to go into? Or? It's something that I do want to do a a PhD on. Um, yeah. it, it, I'm looking more and more into it. It's, I, I came up with the theory about six years ago when I was doing a bit of research on type 1 diabetics and mm. the, how obstructive sleep apnea can affect type 1 diabetes and their glucose regulation. Mm. And we had a, a, you know, a really interesting case study where I had a guy come in and he hardly uses insulin because he was ketogenic. Yeah. So it's type one, type one diabetes, ketogenic. So in the yeah, day, you don't need you don't need yeah. that much insulin to, to control. Yeah. He had a little bit of insulin prior to bed because he found that in the morning that his uh, blood glucose was high, mm -hmm. and that leads us on to metabolic control of of, of yeah. thank you. But what what we found was that we looked at his oxygen saturations during the night. So what his oxygen levels were. Mm -hmm. We screened him for any cardiac disease and any other issues that might cause anything to do with oxygen at night. And within the first part of the night, we actually saw these rapid drops in oxygen levels. 
And corresponding to that, we measured his blood glucose, blood glucose over tonight. And that was when we saw this rapid drop in blood mm. glucose at the same time. And I was thinking to myself, all of a sudden it flattened out. So his blood glucose was stable and his oxygen levels were stable. And I think there's got to be something going on mm. here mm. where there's a rapid change in blood glucose that's causing this, you know, this oxygen levels. And I thought to myself, well, you know, if we're not consuming food and we don't get the corresponding rise of insulin and leptin, we're giving leptin exogenously, do we get the same rise in leptin as we would if we were to consume food? And have a look at that. We actually don't, especially individuals who are ketogenic, who particularly might have low leptin levels or even leptin resistance because they don't they particularly, yeah. they have very low body fat, this guy did, but anyway. So I was looking into it and I was thinking, leptin has this role somehow as looking into the literature of, of protecting the airway and stimulating the, uh, the, the, the breathing per se when we're sleeping. And that's when I looked into that literature and, and that's uh, where I come up with this theory of, 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 of stress, not obese individuals. Mm, very interesting. And more so though with sleep apnea focused or just poor sleep in general? Yeah, well, more so sleep apnea focused because I wanted to see what was causing the, the sleep, sleep apnea, sleep. whether it's central sleep apnea, which where the, yeah. the brain actually doesn't send the mm, neurons to the which diaphragm. Way it's kind of one or the other, which yeah. one's causing... Yeah, because yeah. you can get central, central leptin resistance, which mm. we see in patients that get something called obesity hypoventilation syndrome, and that's basically where people are that... You know, that yeah. They hypoventilate because they're so large mm. that actually the leptin central leptin resistance suppresses their breathing, and then they end up just getting holding retention of uh, CO2, and they get yeah. really sick from that. Really, really sick. And when they're sleeping, or just when they're sleeping, can but in, during the yeah. Day so when they're sleeping, they're in the brief. But we can we can see when we you know, when we're doing um, RER measurements on cardiopulmonary exercise tests, we actually see that their 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 breathing is suppressed as well. Yeah. So they yeah. might be thinking, oh, it's asthma, it's this or yeah. that. Yeah. Really but I think be, it's just yeah. leptin resistance. Yeah. Yeah. Having that problem with it. Well, we'll see you in a couple of years. See if you come out of it. Yeah, yeah. that's it. What that's other it. Um, metabolic um, consequences do you have from poor sleep? So, um, I talked a little bit about a study that I found when I was doing a bit of literature research, and the the research what they did in this research they had fourteen uh, hours of a of, of a diet. So a diet was nine hundred calories deficit. So these individuals would would would, would have a, a, a an RER of roughly uh, sorry an RMR of roughly about two thousand five hundred calories. So reasonably substantial deficit. Yeah, yeah. Half the half the patients were eight and a hour, eight and a half hours sleep, and the half the other, the other patients were five and a half hours sleep. And they were matched for for BMI, mm-hmm. age, fitness level, etc., and all the diets were were matched as well, and they both lost the same amount of weight. So three weight. Ki- three yeah, so three kilos weight. The pa- the patients that slept eight and a half hours lost one point six kilos of fat, yeah. whereas the patients who had five point five hours only lost point six mm-hmm. kilos of fat. Mm-hmm. So it was very catabolic in mm. terms yeah. of eating away the muscles. And obviously, growth hormone, going back to that. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And that's it. Because of that, well, there's, there's different pathways. So you've got the uh, sympathetic nervous system activation, which then can increase your, your cortisol levels, which your, your cortisol actually reduces protein uptake and mm. uh, is actually a catabolic hormone. Yeah, in chronic. Yeah. In chronic. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, in chronic issues. Not acute, because yeah. everyone no. freaks out. No, no. Yeah. I mean, cortisol is needed. Cortisol is needed needed to wake up but not constantly high all the time or constantly no output the opposite yeah. elevated over you know average levels and mm. what you got to remember with hormones is that actually they're, they, they it's not all of a sudden just the body releases them they release them like it's like yeah. surges and it's like it's the actual area under the curve that we look at and yeah. if that's larger than normal um and also because we get an increase in uh, ghrelin as well yeah so ghrelin like hungry and mm. makes you hungry but that's also a hormone that is you know, produce that actually holds on to fat, makes the whole the body mm. hold on to fat. And the study suggests that the uh, and I hate the word starvation mode, but in a way it is it's yeah, protecting. It's retaining fat tissue and yeah. getting rid of protein that's yeah. unnecessary and getting rid of muscle mass. And they they estimated energy expenditure in those individuals that have five point five hours sleeping up actually four hundred calories less a day. Yeah. And I mean the, the research was actually a well published study and I'll, I'll give it to you a few show notes so you can people yeah, want to read yeah. if you want. Yeah. But going on to that is is if we're getting this over, you know, this over um, secretion of cortisol and, and these sympathetic nervous systems, that then causes an issue with uh, gluconeogenesis. So we get an increase of glucose from the, you know, the, the from the liver, and that increases the amount of glucose that's in in the body overnight. 
And if we get in a reduction in sleep during the night, our brain actually uptakes a lot of glucose. So then we get high glucose levels throughout the throughout the night. Mm. And you can imagine over over a period of time, we get um, a decrease in insulin sensitivity. Mm. And the research actually suggests that from perhaps maybe only four or five nights of restricted sleep, maybe only to five hours, that we can in- decrease insulin sensitivity by roughly 30, 40%. And that's the same as... It's fastly swaying. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. yeah I, feel slo- I feel sloppy. Yeah. yeah. And After that's like a week of bad sleep. Yeah. That's where I had better abs last week than yeah. I did this week. It'd be, yeah, it'd be interesting if I went through a contest prep phase again and actually got some sleep. What yeah. would happen? Oh, no, you were dreadful. <laughs> Last, your, um, yeah. Your sleep and to be terrible. honest, there was the slowest my body's ever responded to dieting mm. and the biggest difference that we sat down and talked about between when i competed my last show four years ago was i now run a business i now have staff i was stressed we were building a house and i wasn't sleeping as much so mm. and again was probably like losing yeah muscle and fat but not enough yeah. of the good stuff that we needed well, you so, go to sleep thinking about work so you're wired and thinking about fitting in cardio and training on top of work and yeah. you would just constantly like yeah so very yeah and even just thinking about some of my clients who do very well in prep and the clients that get super sh- like next level lean we're talking you know girls that are getting you know seven eight percent on a dexa comparative to ones that have sticking points and thinking back to them definitely sleeps the ones that are sleeping and I also think the clients that don't run their own businesses tend to always do better in comp prep so. oh, probably. <laughs> Certainly. It, I mean running your own business is a stressful uh, uh, thing anyway yeah. and so uh, stress and lack of sleep are essentially the same thing yeah it's, it's just it balance it's homeostasis yeah. of the power of the sympathetic and the sympathetic nervous system yeah and I think we just kind of be brats about it like I was just to be like like I know as a coach super yeah. important mm. but I just kind of be like Ah, it's fine, I'll grind through and then we'll fix it afterwards, you know, which is like, well, it's not helping your body recomposition. So yeah, yeah. it's very um, underrated in the whole Massive, results, yeah. massively underrated. Like if you think about that, if, if you're just that one study saying, I'm sure there's more studies as yeah. well, just that lack of sleep there, or you're already chewing through your muscle mass mm-hmm. um, and not in, a, in much a body calorie fat. deficit, you know, yeah. a huge calorie deficit. Yeah. I mean, there's meta-analyses done on the, on the studies yeah. that less than less than six hours, you get an increase in, in, in body weight. Yeah. And it's from all these things now, reduction in leptin, increase in ghrelin, reduction in growth hormone, down, down regulation of the, 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 the thyroid output and uh, energy, energy expenditure throughout that whole day yeah. and because then what happens is that actually yes we we might have we might be awake for longer so you'd think oh you'd be burning more calories but that extra time that you spent awake mm. you're not moving mm. yeah the body's trying to you know, reduce that meat yeah but then the research suggests and that you then over consume the food the next day and like you said as well you're more in your really sympathetic than parasympathetic so yeah. that's going to have that impact yeah, yeah. as well so, yeah. Yeah. and it's really interesting because they've done studies where they've actually you know, they've, they've restricted sleeping individuals and then they've, they've allowed them to go shopping and then did the same with individuals that are not, not, not limited and yeah. you, people crave those buy uh, crap food crap yeah. foods you, you, it's you exactly make poor choices as, yeah. Yeah. yeah everyone thinks a hangover is like oh you go and get that crappy food because of alcohol no, it's, it's, probably, poor, it's the poor it's the lack of sleep your brain's not working yeah because yeah. I always found like when I was drinking, like back when I was a good solid binge drinker and I was 18, you know, going out, I used to go out every Friday night and the Friday night club shut at midnight. So we had no option but to go home at midnight. And I used to get up and go to running training the next morning, completely fine. Hmm. But the nights I'd go out on the piece till two, three o'clock felt awful. No matter how much drinking was involved, I always correlated hangovers with how much sleep I actually got. Yeah, yeah. So it was very, very interesting. But yeah, just hijacking that whole post now. So <laughs> just wanted to <laughs> drop that we used to drink. <laughs> the, 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 re- the reward center of the brain is actually enhanced when we have lack of sleep as well. So there yeah. are all those things that we basically go for a dopamine hit and mm. we're chasing the cravings, the addictions, all that sort of stuff. It's, we get a real reward. And it's almost so if you add in dopamine and ghrelin, Exactly. Fun, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And they, they, people are craving pizzas and stuff like that. Yeah. Maybe yeah. yeah, that's why I eat so many pizzas. <laughs> no, you just like pizza. No, but like pizza. The thing that I was thinking as well, and I don't know if there's any studies on this, but obviously I get a lot of the you know the clients that they say as I get older it becomes harder to lose weight. But then in my head it's mm. like, well, is it that you're more stressed, you have more responsibilities, and you're getting far less sleep because you've mom. now got kids and you've now got this and that. 
And is there, because obviously they say, like, oh, well, kids need more sleep. And I'm thinking, well, maybe actually adults, because we're more bloody stressed and we've got more going on. Is there a lot of, you know, real outliers in terms of how much sleep we should be getting at different age ranges? Yeah, um, children generally need more sleep. So the fourth theory of why we need sleep is brain plasticity. Mm-hmm. So actually creation of uh, neurons within, within the brain and regulating uh, learning and emotions. And w- when you're a child, you've got that much going on in your life. Learning you've got, a you're lot. Learning yeah. so much your brain's actually grown in certain areas and that's pretty new research mm. I don't know if you've heard of brain, brain plasticity before mm, yeah. but, mm. um, it's quite new research and that's been looked at in, in, in the, the sleep field and it's typically that again that, that, non, that, that non-REM sleep that stage free sleep that is, is crucial for that so as we um, uh, as we're awake we're, like I said earlier we essentially got low level brain damage we get this increase of what's called aden- adenosine and that's what builds up this sleep pressure but adenosine is a byproduct of the neurons in the brain and adenosine triphosphate yep. of cellular metabolism. And it's actually kind of, uh, it's, it's actually like poisonous to, to, our, to our brain in a way. And if we don't get as enough of this non-REM, non-REM sleep, we actually get a buildup of this adenosine. It's called the glymphatic system that removes it. So just like the lymphatic system in the brain, and that then removes this adenosine. And that's when we start to then get increases in cortisol and wake up. Adenosine and norepinephrine in the in the um, in the combination with serotonin actually produces melatonin, which mm-hmm. is melatonin is then you know, what we then makes us fall asleep. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, anyway, so what we get if we don't get a reduction in uh, adenosine is we get these beta amyloid plaques in our brain, and that's been linked to Alzheimer's disease and memory memory loss. Okay. Yeah. So in older individuals, is that we actually we see less and less of this non-REM sleep, and that's because their need for growth hormone and testosterone is less as well. Reducing, yeah. But we don't we actually don't know in the sleep industry whether we can prolong that non-REM and actually yeah, improve okay. the like the chances of um, reducing you know, Alzheimer's, Alzheimer's. Potentially, mm-hmm. yeah. And that's one of the areas that's being looked at and studied Very by Professor Matthew Walker at the moment. Well, I know that um, an adenosine mimetic is caffeine, isn't yes. it? Yes. So yeah. it uses the same receptor. Um, that's why caffeine keeps yeah, you yeah. awake. Yeah, it's a synergist, so it an antagonizes that, mm. that, that part of the so, adenosine. If you want to stay awake because of that, hit your caffeine. <laughs> if you're not sleeping very well, stop having your caffeine. Yeah, that's, that's one it. of the questions that get asked. Actually, I mean, getting caffeine into. has a half-life of about 4.5 to 5 hours. Yeah, that was what people were asking, how long before bed, yeah. Yeah, so if you imagine that you have it at 5 o'clock, 5 hours later, you've still got a quarter yeah. and, and a half in your system. how much you have. What if you smash like 300 or 400 milligrams, say a stinking rich in caffeine pre-workout that people are buzzing up on their whiz yeah. to the gym at 6 p.m. So like, I, I yeah. see, well, well, see. you've still got 150 yeah. legs in you. Obviously, I, I train in the gym and the amount of people yeah. that oh, I see yeah. having these pre-workouts oh, when they're getting late, from work, yeah. it's like 200, 300 milligrams yeah. of caffeine. And you Instead of just like maybe a shot of coffee and then go. Yeah. 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 I mean, I, I mean, what coffee is about, what, 50 milligrams? Uh, yeah, the Nespresso pods are only about 40, yeah. so we go yeah. by a pod and know how many pods yeah. we're having for our caffeine. But I mean, when I was on comp prep, yeah, I was smashing a pre-workout out and a few coffees a day and I think anything up to having still like 30 to 50 milligrams in your body yeah. is enough to affect your sleep yeah. for that four hour period, I, yeah. yeah I mean I have to be careful how much you're um, more sensitive to diet coke yeah. mm-hmm. I have before bed I call it a tipple yeah because yeah, yeah, um, yeah. I have like 150 mils still of, got caffeine in it but yeah. it's, it's about 12 milligrams of caffeine yeah. if I, mean, I have like 250 of diet coke I won't sleep coffee yeah. drinkers and caffeine consumers do get this build up intolerance to it yeah. but mm. that doesn't ha- they not have an effect on their sleep still mm. Mm. So although they you know, they need more to actually feel the buzz from it, it's just like the reward pleasure, the dopamine hit that you get in the brain yeah. mm. is exactly the same. But it still affects the quality people. of sleep. Yeah, yeah the quality of sleep. Sure. Because that's it, we have sleep duration and sleep quality, mm. and they're both just as important as each other. Mm. The irony is people talk about caffeine being, they take it pre-workout for the um, ergogenic aids mm-hmm. when you need so many milligrams of it to actually help you it's mm. I think it's three milligrams absolute minimum lot, yeah. per kilogram up to nine so really you only need a small amount to block that adenosine receptor so you can train harder so there's no real point in having what a double or a triple unless you're going to go for five six hundred milligrams <laughs> yeah. and then it's going to have and then it's going to have a negative feedback loop with gains anyway potentially because then you're not sleeping yeah, so it's it. like yeah. yeah you got more caffeine you again mm. the stimulants so you're stimulating that you know, sympathetic nervous system mm. again and then you you're going into that whole process of, of yeah potentially think, having a catabolic i think state. caffeine is like an enhancement for actual like physical results is like just a bit 
it's it's like again coming back to a risk versus reward. It's just mm. like it's not there's not enough sleep like, versus a, a a better slightly yeah, better session. Yeah, so it's yeah. you, you have to outweigh the fact that you're going to get quality good quality sleep, yeah. which in my opinion is the most crucial part of everything yeah. because it's the triage of all three. You know, Absolutely. You, you can, if you don't if you don't get your sleep and consume food again, you're getting thirty yeah. percent drop in insulin sensitivity and your glucose. You're not going to be able to. Uh, pull that into the muscles and yeah. you know, replenish your glycogen and even like well you, you said before with like even then cravings like the likelihood then to potentially go binge eat and if you're already in a calorie deficit and you're already hungry you're just really like playing with fire you're making <laughs> yeah. it almost like triple whammy. more at risk like you're already tired so and i find the vicious cycle that clients get into especially during like preps or deficits is they stim up to go train mm-hmm. and then like you said they can't wind down so then they go to bed later and then they wake up tired so then they stim up again and it's like that ongoing yeah. cycle instead yeah. of going hey maybe I just need a night off the gym to get a good night's sleep so I feel good I don't need all those stims no, in the morning and then yeah. slowly bring back into it but yeah I think um, the topic you touched on there where, whether we need more sleep uh, younger and older mm. I think talking about mums we had a quick chat about this before but yeah. um, what sort of strategies can mums use it's a are you saying when they have their kids at you're the age? You've or? just had a kid and you're trying your best to sleep train your kid. They're so they don't get mad, mad at Sean so when we have a child. <laughs> yeah. uh, to be honest with you, I think great moms all would do a great job is what they're doing. is It's a very hard and challenging thing. And it's... Um, Get your sleep when you can. So if your child is sleeping in a day, then yes, you, you, should, sleep. you should try and yeah. sleep as well. Try not to leave that too late though, because having naps um, uh, you know, past five, six o'clock is then going to disrupt your sleep. Yeah. Um, try and tra- train your child as, as early as possible. Get into your own habit. Have your habit that you're sleeping, so you're already dimming down the lights. You're already starting to uh, quiet down, you know, relaxing yourself. Have your child on you, relaxing with you. It's apparently, children like to fall asleep on the bit on the on the yeah. On the, so on the dogs. Bed. Yeah. So dogs as well. <laughs> yeah. Um, and like that's it. Just try and get them into bed. And yeah. whatever you can do is. is and because that's one of the questions I was going to ask. That with naps, like, is there? you know any research that says that say you're aiming for eight hours so for example this is something i'm a big napper so Mm -hmm. if i only sleep because i've got a deadline for midnight and then i have to wake up at six and do something and i've only got five and a half hours i like to squeeze in a nap in the afternoon about two or three o'clock and then i'll go train so it's kind of my pre-workout is my nap Yeah, yeah now is there anything wrong with doing that as or are there more benefits in me getting straight sleep so there was a, a very large cohort study come out this year or over eleven thousand people and that suggests that if you have less than six hours sleep per night then actually having a nap up to an hour can be very beneficial performance and mm-hmm. reducing cardiovascular mm-hmm. risks that was the question sleep. i was going to ask is how long is yeah. a nap yeah yeah so i mean it depends what you're looking for so remember if, if you're if you only want a, a short 20 30 minute nap that can be that deep sleep mm-hmm. that, that restorative sleep you can use it for that but if you mm-hmm. want to get the whole REM cycle yeah. in and you want to you know say for example you've just gone away and you've just studied and then you want to go and have a nap and use it as a protocol to try and learn you might want to go for the whole 90 mm. minutes and get that REM sleep mm. in there as well yeah okay because I find that I need very short naps like I barely even get to sleep and I feel completely recovered when I do sleep and I go to sleep for an hour or two I feel like shit yeah yeah I mean you get to 10 to 15 minutes can be enough for some people yeah. definitely because you like a good solid sleep yeah, yeah. But I do want to say that if you if you, um, if you sleep more than seven hours, then the actual, it's the converse. So actually yeah, having a nap is... that's what is, I was going to say. When I've had crap sleep, a longer nap is better. Yeah. And when I've had okay sleep, yeah. but I just feel like I need a little more a cognitive eyes. break from the computer. Mm-hmm. That's when a 20 minute will be good. But then that's not about sleep. That's more about like almost like somewhat meditation because it's not even really fully Mm. going into I definitely don't get into a deep sleep or that stage two stage three when it's 20 minutes so that'd be bringing your sympathetic nervous system down a touch that's it and you know you just mentioned meditation meditation is another thing that we can use to try and activate that parasympathetic nervous system so Mm. if we do get less than five hours six six five to six less than six hours sleep we can actually use meditation to try and relax us and that has been shown to be very beneficial in reducing the the health impacts of of Mm. poor sleep that's awesome. So what are um, some good tips to actually get to sleep? Yes. Because like, I find there's two different types. Like you get to sleep very easily. Yeah, I'm a good sleeper. Um, I don't get to sleep very easily. Um, so like we'll be in bed and Sean will be, I'll start singing a song sometimes. Right. And he'll be like, 
do not sing more than a yeah. sentence because it will get stuck in my head. And then I'm like, I literally get a death stare. Well, I, yeah, I have hyperfocal ADHD. Yeah. So if okay. I hear something like that, I'll again and again and again and again and again all through my head. <laughs> so if she sings anything, I have to plug my ears. Yeah. Oh, I used to think he was yeah. being really rude when we first started no, dating and I was like, what? Yeah. I was just singing a nice song. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and well, the interesting thing is that, that you singing that song is actually probably taking your mind off other things. Yeah. And yeah. that's making yeah. you focus and that's your meditation yeah. making you relax. It's whereas me not for thinking you, about work or, yeah. Yeah, yeah. it's the opposite. And I think uh, too many people try to jump to sleeping tablets to help them. And mm. sleeping tablets are terrible because they're like a band aid. Yeah. yeah, it's, it's re- like a cortisol shot. Like it's really not fixing yeah. the problem. It's yeah. just, it's, just, it's sedation. Cortisone, not cortisol. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's sedation at the end of the day, and in the short term, it might help people, but it, it's something that's very addictive, and we don't want to yeah. be doing that. So, one of the best things we can do is actually just use our bodies and use the breath. Mm. So you know, we can do very slow no, counter right breath down. and get yeah, trying to you know, increase that parasympathetic nervous yep. system and it reduce the breath count to maybe four and do cycles of windows so four, mm. four, four seconds out four seconds hold four seconds in yeah there's different um, theories on the numbers isn't there yeah there's, I mean there's, there's all different ones you've got the end of the day, people do tai chi the, and that was stuff that's bar- like that just defined breathe. just breathe slower yeah, yeah. at the end of the yeah. day than what you're doing yeah. currently like. and I mean I've struggled with, with sleep in my past I've, I've suffered from anxiety and stuff and one thing that I've found doing it's a combination of that, uh, you know, the breath work but also um, I remember listening to a Buddhist tell me about how they get taught to sleep, and in fact, it's all to do with imagery. Mm. Yeah. So what? So what they it's do? It's like in yoga. Yeah, exactly the same as in yoga. So they, they count the breath, and this was ten seconds out, ten second pause, and then once you get into kind of that. Uh, deep thought where you're really kind of just lost in that trance it's actually visualize your nervous system right in the core in your center and visualize that switching off Mm. and then visualize and feel all your muscles just slowly relaxing and it's really it's amazing Mm. you can actually feel some people fall asleep doing yoga yeah yeah yeah. it used to happen all the time when i was an Mm. instructor yeah you hear people snoring over in the corner Mm. so well it's a compliment like someone that sleeps like sleeps the best out of all the people i know sleeps a solid like nine ten hours a night is my mum. Yeah. And she's a yoga instructor, lived in India yeah. for three years, you know, did lived in the Buddhist temples. Yeah. She gets up and does her meditation and calm. her Reiki and she's a very calm person. She does her, she's got her Reiki beads mm-hmm. and she sits there and counts the beads and does her breathing. And yeah, like we'll rock up at a house on a Sunday, it's 10 a.m. And she's like, oh, I just woke up. Like, <laughs> like, <laughs> That's probably because she has this ability to switch off and yeah. reduce those excitatory neuropeptides in yeah. her brain. It's so easy. Yeah. Um, one of the major tips is just consistency. Yeah. So if, if you can get to bed at the same time in the morning every night, because we you know our body is on a circadian rhythm, mm-hmm. it's controlled by the light. When we have light or darkness received by the eye, it's written with a supercosmetic nuclei actually uh, starts to redu- uh, stimulate the, the uh, increase of melatonin and that's when we start to get sleepy but it's from that conversion of adenosine throughout the day and that happens around about 20, uh, 24.1 hours on a consistent clock mm. so we can at least wake up every morning at the same time because it's yeah. hard to control when we're going to sleep because yeah. we have things to do but if you can get up even if it's short time it's going to mean that you're then tired again for the next night and you're more likely to be able to get asleep at the right time mm. and what we've got to remember is that actually the amount of sleep we're getting compared to the amount of time we're spent in bed for most people is there's a little bit of a difference mm. and it's what we term sleep efficiency and it's the amount of sleep we're getting for a total amount of time in bed yeah. If we're getting above 85%, that's considered pretty good. Mm-hmm. But that still leaves about an hour. So you're meaning, I'm just thinking layman's terms, people listening, that means if, say, you're going to bed at 10, but mm-hmm. you don't actually fall asleep yeah. until 11, and then you wake up in the morning to your first alarm, and then you fight us around, and you're not yeah. really back asleep. That's, that's what you mean? Yeah, that, yeah. yeah, that's it. And you know, it, some people wake up in the middle of the night, and they might have 10 yeah. minutes where they can't get back to sleep again. And that might be a few times in the night, and at least a half an hour. Yeah. But really, we want eight hours, or seven sleep to nine hours yeah. of eight of, of, of solid sleep. Yeah. And that might mean for some individuals, you've got to increase the amount of time that you're actually spending in bed, which mm. people don't like to hear. Yeah, because if it takes <laughs> them an hour to wind down they're like oh yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. which takes me on to the second point is creating that environment in your, in your house yeah so as soon as that sun's down start to dim the lights down mm. start to cool the house down because actually our body needs to drop by around about one celsius one degree celsius yep. scored mm. up to a temperature to actually fall asleep and a good tip is that not in the summer particularly but in the winter is have a warm shower and then jump into your bed because it's actually the change in poor body temperature that actually causes you initially to go to sleep. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Do you have cold showers? Yeah, so do I. I yeah, okay. 
Mm. I absolutely love cold Purely because it's Australia and it's 40 degrees. <laughs> I think me and you are the English there. It's, probably, it's definitely, it's definitely <laughs> quite nice. I really warm showers. Yeah, yeah, really yeah. Every, your, your sleep efficiency, I think, would be very My good. sleep's pretty good, yeah, yeah. yeah. And I, you get out of bed when you wake up. Oh, no, I'm a bit of a third alarm sometimes. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah. Mm. and then I find I'm worse sometimes yeah. if I do that. I need to just get yeah, up get and on, yeah. go, yeah. A good way to see if you're actually sleep deprived is not set an alarm and still see if you wake up the same time. Yeah, color. I tend to wake up pretty much 6.30 so, regardless, whereas yeah. Sean's probably probably 7.30 or somewhere around there. I'll get up and have done morning exercise. But I hear you wake yeah, up yeah, I hear and then I'm not actually asleep. Yeah, yeah okay. and any and noise I make is up, like, and yeah. I'm pretty noisy, so. Yeah. 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 Very, very noisy. <laughs> Can we talk about women in the morning versus men in the morning? <laughs> And you at night, because yeah, I go to bed oh, earlier yeah. and you stay out sometimes. But let's get get, get back on topic. So yeah. at night, Strategies. cleaning up your sleep, how to improve it. So obviously number one is thinking about your breath, thinking yep. about actually just calming your thoughts, yep. your patterns, that neurological stuff that's yep. going on, consciousness, and then in terms of actual surroundings of your bedroom. like So yeah. the, the bedroom is for two things, sleep and sex. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. If, if you've, yeah, the second one's better. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, oh, that's one I can touch on. Well, what about if you want to go to sleep and your boyfriend constantly wants sex <laughs> and you're trying to focus on important. your deep sleep? Yeah. <laughs> anyway. Get remember, it. I'm, remember I'm making you food. <laughs> yes. I'm a sleep specialist, not a relationship specialist. <laughs> I'll leave that to you guys. <laughs> uh, and he's like, we're trying to make a baby. Okay, yeah. so let's go back to the first one. Yeah, so the actual bedroom. You can go and analyze. Maybe we'll make you go and analyze our bedroom and have a look at the setup of it. Because I found we've moved house recently. Yeah. Our sleep has been so much better at this house. Mm. We set up our house because we built it. So our bedroom's at the back. Yeah. Our old house was right at the front. Oh, right. Cars driving past. We had terrible light leaking into our bedroom. This is the darker side of the house. Um, it's We Block painted the wall behind our bedroom a dark color for a reason. It's quite bright. Block out blinds. We had crappy blinds in the last house. Yeah. And it's it has impacted our sleep. And it's also a bigger bedroom, so it's tidier. And I don't know if that's something that's normal for people, but I find if our room's messy, I don't sleep well. Stuffy. And it's, yeah. I think it's more the association with the psychology of it. Isn't it? Messy yeah. room means that you're, you're rushing around. And you're you're not organizing day. your yeah. brain. And, and, you know, people are struggling. They can write down their thoughts and that yeah. often and helps then actually go oh, that's okay that's thoughts out my brain or if it's something they got to do the next day just remind from themselves and that can then settle people but yeah having the room so it's dark you it sounds like you guys have got it perfect up there yeah, but yeah. if you've got you know blinds that are cheap and old and you've got light coming in and out in and outside of them it's going to disturb you it's going to wake you up and it's going to yeah, shift that melatonin so it's a little bit later on so yeah you're not getting a deeper sleep earlier on thoughts on um exogenous melatonin Okay, so the the research. Uh, Keep going off topic. Yeah. <laughs> come back to um, Mel- Maybe we can come back to supplements at the end. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll talk, yeah. yeah. We'll talk about supplements so at the end. Let's go back to your sleep, the room, and everything there. Yeah. I mean, a lot of people out there have TVs in their in their rooms, yeah. and particularly children. You know, it's, yeah. it's something that a lot of people oh, put yeah. in there. And and like I said, the, making an environment where you feel like you can sleep in. It's not something that you're trying to create stimuli. It's not offices. Some people put their laptops in their rooms and have a little desk by the side of their mm. bed, and that can really disrupt the, mm. the psychology of actually going yeah. to bed. Um, again, noise. We're trying to reduce the noise as much as you can. Some people can't do that, but earplugs are the, the next best thing. Yeah. You can get used to those. Oh, eye masks. We do, we do eye masks yeah, if you want to sleep in. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Eye masks if you want to if you want to sleep in. Or I, I don't recommend sleeping in. Yeah. <laughs> More if it, we've gone to bed late. Yeah. Because say we've yeah. been out at an event or whatever, and you've yeah. got home at one a.m. and you're like, I want some Still decent sleep. Then you know, oh, yeah, um, yeah. I put my phone now in our ensuite bathroom. Yep. Yeah. Because it used to be next to my bed, and I would subconsciously be like, "There's something I've got to reply to." Because again, yeah. run your own business. There's always something to reply to. Yeah. So I, that's when I always tell my clients to do. First thing I always ask is, "Where's your phone when you go to sleep?" Yeah. People are addicted to these things. Yeah. At the end of the yeah. day, they are the biggest disruptor of our sleep now. Yeah. You know, it was the light a hundred years ago, but now it's the, the, the mobile phone, and people are sat there in their bed with it. 20 inches from their face mm. with this bright light and then they, they come to me like, I can't sleep. Well, what, what, what <laughs> I've got a sore neck. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And you think about what they're doing on it and you've got like, for example, like some of my female clients, they go on Instagram and they start looking at, you know, other females, comparison. They look at other people's lives and then they all of a sudden have got themselves worked out before they're trying to go to sleep yeah. and then they're stressing about all the stuff they don't have and all these expectations. Like, yeah. 
the worst thing that you can do like you know so people are scrolling through Facebook yeah. doing next 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 I'll watch that for five minutes two minutes and oh you know next, there's my, there's my ex-boyfriend and he's yeah. got a kid or you know <laughs> yeah. like and then you try yeah. to put your phone down it's all of a sudden you've got this one little thought that leads down the path and yeah. your thoughts going to grow and grow and grow and you've yeah. made this big image in your mind that you it's completely real and you, you're getting anxious and you can't yeah. sleep so other than breathing if people aren't into because I have a lot of clients so I'm not into meditation and I'm like okay yeah. let's find something else for you then yeah. um, so what are some other suggestions as to like winding down and things you can do when you get into bed as if people have got a bath having a nice soak in a hot bath mm-hmm. warming down um, potentially even uh, having uh, magnesium salts in there mm-hmm. that's going to help people relax yeah. uh, as well um, creating that habit so uh, I know myself that I have my routine of of I, I like yoga so I actually have you know do a little bit of yoga and then just do a bit of breathing that calms me down but then I know that I'm going to go and have my, my, my magnesium bit of water yeah. with that and then my next step is brushing the teeth yeah making sure I don't turn the light on for brushing the teeth because that's all of a sudden going to disrupt you brush your teeth without a light on? so I've got a, a light that I put I have my bathroom door open yeah. and I have so a dim light you do it the wrong way around yeah, yeah so. we have our bathroom on and the bedroom off <laughs> yeah, so we do the other yeah. way yeah, and yeah. dim out because we can dim our bedroom yeah. but we yeah. can't dim we'll our bathroom that that's yeah. it but a, but a lot of people do that it's yeah, obviously they go from a, a dim room yeah. into the into the bathroom it's bright Bright Stick a candle in there, and it's usually yeah. white and bright, and yeah, yeah, yeah. Brush your teeth, and then if I'm too warm, I'll have a cold shower, and then jump straight into bed. Yeah, and it's almost like having that that da 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 sleep. Yeah, it's like you know your brain's winding down. You've already started that progress from as soon as the sun goes down to dimming the lights down. Mm-hmm. It's going. I'm going to have less and less technology. I'm going to put the phone away an hour before I go to bed. And now I'm going to go for maybe a, little, a bit of food or, or, mm. or whatever. What I'm going to have a bit of magnesium, your vitamins, or whatever you want to take, and then that's it. You go away to your sleep. Yeah. But it's 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 almost being in that calm state as well. It's like having everything in all. Or what out. are the things that are going to calm you down? Yeah, figuring out. Figuring yeah. it out. Yeah. Have you got your? Are you a busy person? If you're a busy person, have you got what you you want to do tomorrow? Have you set your goals yeah. for tomorrow already? Have you already written your list yeah. out for the next Is day? Is that already there? Yeah. Rather than having to think in what what have I got to do tomorrow? That's what I, I do. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. The last thing when I've kind of decided, okay, work's done for the night. Mm-hmm. Then it's the list for the next day because it's like you get to a point where you're like, I can't get anything else done tonight. I'm not efficient. I'm tired. Write your list and then you know get on with things because yeah like you said it's like when people uh you know anxiety is just forward focus so when you're focusing on the potential negatives of the future yeah, yeah, then yeah. you're going to struggle to switch yeah. off because you're like there's more i could do right now and it's like but you're not efficient right now that's the thing that we always say to each other at night we get to a point where like we're being inefficient yeah because you get to the point with your you're still brain, working but so slowly that it's not it's worth not it not worth it yeah. Might as well yeah. call it a day, get some sleep, wake up more efficient. Once yeah. you've been awake for 16 hours, yeah. uh, you're, you're the capacity of your brain to be able to function is reduced by like 30, 40%. And once yeah. you get to like 20 to 22 hours of, of, of a wakefulness, you're actually considered the same as you would be if you were drunk. <laughs> <laughs> Which is the hangover. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, exactly. And then you start to make mistakes and you know, stupid yeah. things and message people and then all of a sudden you're... Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <Uh-oh. laughs> yeah. So what's the difference between people that... Um, struggle to get to sleep and people that struggle to stay asleep. So, I mean, the sleep latency is the term of how long it takes you to get to sleep. Yeah. And that's often pe- people who are, you know, tend to be, um, a lot of people can sleep okay. But people who tend to wake up, it might particularly be because of elevated levels of, uh, of cortisol, mm-hmm. for example, that could be one. Another one could be potentially um, uh, iron or magnesium deficiencies which yeah. can lead to what's magnesium called magnesium deficiency is huge yeah and that leads to something called periodic limb movement disorder in some individuals and it's particularly seen in the athletic population of people who are training really hard mm-hmm. and it's just little kind of flickers in your feet when you're sleeping yeah. and it can be enough just to, to, to cause your brain to wake up and all of a sudden you're like oh, how come I've woken up and then noise yeah so noisy rooms people tend to wake up because of noisy rooms um, and then obstructive sleep apnea is also yeah. you know, quite common in individuals. If you're a male over the age of 40, early age of 40, it's roughly around about 25% of people have obstructive sleep apnea nowadays, so it's quite high. So I think that's probably an easier one to sort more than more than actually getting to sleep. Yeah, yeah it's, it's, the mind it's as simple up, as, like yeah. a, a mag- magnesium is water soluble, so if you're training intensely and sweating out those mm-hmm. um, electrolytes and stuff, you just literally take magnesium. Mm. That's um, it, yeah. And you know, again, it comes back to the room. Keep it nice and dark. Yeah. 
um, which should keep you asleep. And if you've had a mattress for more than seven to ten years as well, yeah. that can be you know, really mm-hmm. disruptive. Oh, some disgusting things about mattresses as well. <laughs> yeah. It's because they're so expensive. Oh. And I have like clean yeah. sheets. Like if I feel sheets like the sheets, glorious. I like to be, yeah, fresh mm-hmm. sheets. All those things, like, it's surprising when you think about it, how much of a difference they make. And how even, frequently do you change your sheets? And yeah, all stuff even, and like, it. your pyjamas and the clothes you're wearing, or if you, I find we always sleep better when we're nude. Yeah, <laughs> like, you I know? Never, yeah. Yeah, yeah, because it, it's, like, as a female, like, trying to go to sleep in a bra or something, like, it's the most uncomfortable thing. Same with, as a girl, I find if I don't take my, like, I always am pretty good, and that's part of my sleep routine is really washing my face and doing yeah. a proper cleanse and moisturize and all of that. Because otherwise, it's like, again, another thing that's like on you that's not making you feel relaxed, like all those little, little things. Mm. But yeah. It comes back to being comfortable, I suppose. Yeah. Well. yeah. I mean, one, pe- one thing you people can do is just like walk to your bedroom door, turn around and just take an honest look at your room and say, is this a place that I feel like I'd want to go to sleep and yeah. feel comfortable yeah. in? So, yeah. And if it's not, you look at it, it's like a bit bare and not, you know, it's not, it's not fresh and it's been all over the place. Yeah. 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 And you just go in actually I wouldn't it's being honest with yourself yeah. and going actually let's make some changes in here let's make an environment that actually I feel like I want to go to sleep in and that's why some people when they go on holiday and they've got a nice spanking fresh hotel room so sleep better. really really well yeah, yeah. The people it's clean do. it's made to look like a bedroom mm. that's mm. it yeah, 100%. Like, you spend... What was that we were watching? No, I think it was the Barefoot Investor book. He was talking about the one most yeah. important investment he made is his pillow. Yeah, Because yeah, he's yeah. like, sleep is everything. So he's like, you know, I'll save money on clothes, but I'm going to spend a few hundred bucks on a pillow because at the end of the day... It affects everything. Mm. So that was, I remember him saying that and we were like, we need to buy a pillow. It was the first thing in, in <laughs> yeah. the book. It doesn't yeah. talk about investment, only talks about a pillow. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, we go, and we still haven't bought new pillows. <laughs> so, <laughs> keeping, the, keeping the room, cl- uh, the room cool as well. Okay. Yeah. Well, yeah. We, that's the thing, we've got ducted aircon in this house. And that's a hard one in summer because some people obviously don't have ducted aircon or don't have mm-hmm. things, but you know, then that might be a case of just a very light sheet or yeah, yeah. you know, yeah. all of Fan. those sort of things, fans. Yeah. yeah. I've got, yeah. I haven't got aircon in my, in my unit. Yeah. And it sucks to be you. Yeah. I leave the back door open and, and then I just get bit by mozzies and that keeps me oh, really? flying around my ears. <laughs> Someone's like, coming in oh, and like break in, I'd be all paranoid. Yeah. Like, I'm, I'm not bothered about yeah. people, yeah. people no, running in, mozzies. like the mosquitoes. Yeah. Yeah. You're like, I'm sleeping to love me. mosquitoes. <laughs> <laughs> Just chase them away naked. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> just run after them. Because <laughs> when we first moved into this house, we didn't have blinds for four weeks. How fun our sleep was then. Oh, so really? we've been sleep deprived for probably going on about a, a month a bit now. Start, yeah. yeah, so yeah. We, we used to get sunburned in bed. Yeah, yeah, that was fun. So you wake up and you're like, why am I so red? on your face. And I'm on that you side. Mean you mean no, you? Me, I'm yeah. on the other side. Yeah. <laughs> But the funny thing was that, but the good thing about the blinds was we were going to bed earlier because we were mm-hmm. like, we know that we're going to get woken up at 5, yeah. 6 a.m. and we're not normally super early morning mm-hmm. people. So it actually, we got into a better habit with our sleep, yeah. but yeah. See, that's me. I'm, I'm the opposite. So yeah. I actually like to go by the sun. So I'm up at, I'm a nine to five. I'd like to get back. I'd yeah. like to get there. <laughs> yeah. It's mm. a goal. But actually, this, this um, one messed me up when we first got together because he didn't sleep. No. So we used to go to bed yeah. so early. Mm. And I was so late. I wasn't that early. Well, I was 10.30. That was yeah, so, yeah. so early. Yeah. He was, was 2, 2 a.m. But I think, I mean, in England, they've got a, a different culture. So people mm. people go to sleep at like 11, 12 o'clock in England yeah. and they get up at 7. Even my nan and grandpa go to sleep at midnight. Mm. And I, I had an issue when I first moved over here three years ago. Is that I was going to sleep late and I was like... Perth's dead now. Because like, yeah. we're morning, morning people in Perth. Everyone's yeah. a morning person and up yeah. running and walking and active and, and it's like, a different culture. I was like having to put a, you know, an eye mask on in the morning so then I thought, yeah. you know, I thought to myself it's probably going to be better if that I actually just shift Change. my time mm. to yeah. and that's when I used melatonin. Mm, okay. Right. Yeah. So if you want to shift your the phase that you actually go into sleep melatonin the research suggests that actually you can do that. Yeah. But, when, I, when I used melatonin I had it prescribed so proper prescription for it I had yes. a spray and I had stuff. Yes. I, it which made me so groggy in the morning. Yeah, like, okay. I found that. I hear that a lot. And yeah. I've heard that. I've had several clients on it. So I yeah. don't know if I was on too much. When we take it? Uh, a couple of hours before bed, I think about. Okay. Yeah. yeah that's interesting. Because I remember them saying not to take it right before bed, yeah. but take it earlier. And yeah, I was just groggy. Yeah. But I was also, if I look back at a period of my life when I was dieting and very lean and mm-hmm. all those things. So I don't know whether it was a combination of just being generally tired, but I remember yeah. taking it. And it was when I was PTing at um, 4 or 5 a.m. and just waking up for my first client and literally being like, 
just yeah. out of it. Right? I mean, it's difficult to tell from you know, mm. or from all those you know, more variables. factors and yeah. all those variables that you have there. But generally, melatonin shouldn't really give you yeah. too much of an issue when you're waking up. But the issue is that people often can't sleep and then they go to take melatonin, mm. and all of a sudden you've shifted your 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 sleep phase or you know, to two yeah. two a.m. rather than your ten. And looking PM. back, I was probably just going to bed too late in general. So yeah. like you know, yeah. like it's probably like well, your body was trying to get that sleep, but yeah. you know, it's not yeah getting there. So definitely. So let's, I guess, like recap on the bedroom stuff. So we want to have a nice, you know, calming space. Cool and dark. Cool and dark. Dim the lights. No bright lights. Do not have your phones in the bedroom. TV. That's obviously something you guys want to think about. Like... You know, probably like we have one in our bedroom, which honestly we don't watch. We haven't it. watched it once. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. It was so. my pride and joy of being able to put up a TV. In our yeah, room. yeah, and I, I just think, did it myself. Yeah, we haven't <laughs> even watched it. But no, I think that I think we've barely watched TV the last two months. No, but true. um, but that was more like you know, if we want to have a Sunday, lay in and pop yeah. a movie on or something. But yeah, like you said, at night time, um, meditation, breathing, yeah. and then like Both. yoga or something, form of gentle stretching. And I think that's a big one because for people that train really hard in the gym. And then they just like finish their session. And mm-hmm. how many people do you see just finish and leave? Yeah. And they don't sit and spend five minutes like, yeah. again, going back into that sympathetic, parasympathetic. Yeah. They don't think about that. And they're wired. Then let's say you've thrown in the pre-workouts and then you've come home and had a huge meal because obviously you need to get the gains in. Mm-hmm. So then you've had Massive this big influx of, of carbs mm-hmm. and protein and then your insulin and yeah. everything's like firing. So you think about all those actions you're doing like, mm-hmm. And that impact, which is why we're all... And then you probably watch a TV show as well or something. Yeah. Like, or you're on your phone. Yeah. I mean, that's quite a good segue into uh, you know, nutritional strategies to improve yeah. to improve sleep. And yeah, there, cool. there is a, only a limited amount of research on there. And it's yeah. a, an area that obviously I, I majored in nutrition as well. So it's a real yeah. area that I'm kind of trying to yeah. f- um, enjoy reading about. And I, I applied for a PhD over with the Brisbane Broncos to be their you know, sleep specialist. Oh, wow. And cool. look at nutritional strategies with awesome. them. And I got down to the last two, and it was when I was in England, and they said, "Look, this guy's Australian. We don't need to get a visa and stuff like that." So I kind of like, that's yeah. xenophobic. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like you're too hard basket. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, we don't want to pay for you. But. Yeah. But um, so there is uh, a little bit of research that's come out of the Australian Institute of support of, cool. by a woman called Shana Holson, and particularly what we're trying to look at is, is just trying to increase that serotonin so eating foods that yeah. are high in tryptophan yeah and okay. actually, dairy yeah yeah so your, your eggs oh, your dairy so turkey so yeah. um, you, you want about one gram of tryptoph- tryptophan mm. yeah. you want to try and basically free up the um, the, the free t- tryptophan so actually having uh, branch chain amino acids or high protein at the same time your brain is going to uh, absorb whatever has the, the highest amino acid ratio mm-hmm. so okay. it's trying to figure out work that out pumpkin seeds but I think you need something like 300 grams 200 mm. grams of pumpkin seeds I had it? oats there was a little bit I think blueberries yeah. another one yeah, yeah. Um, sticking clear of like red meat isn't it like the opposite yeah so I think, yeah. I think red meat I mean I think that's going back to um, some of the old school bodybuilding theories that red meat stimulates acetylcholine yeah, in the brain, yeah. Which and is I a, don't know how much research there is into yeah, that, but think, it is one that I've always been like oh you know if a client's eating like a ton of red meat before bed and then I also think with red meat as well I was just going to say it's very hard slow to break down Mm. it's like what 24 hours to actually process mm-hmm. that yeah, yeah. comparative to like a light white fish or turkey yeah. or eggs or something. Well, that's quite, yeah. it's quite highly, high, in, high yeah. in leucine, isn't yeah. it? So that's yeah. going to be taken up in preference of yeah. tryptophan, yeah. which then could potentially be spoiling in the new. Mm. Is that the, the premise of the hot milk before bed is potentially yeah, tryptophan? Think, or is that the warmth? I think there's something else in, in milk that yeah. is uh, supposedly linked to, um, I, I've not really looked at milk too much. I can remember. Sean just but, likes milk. I yeah, like milk. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I actually, <laughs> Love milk as well. <laughs> Chocolate milk specifically. <laughs> <laughs> Milo. <laughs> and then uh, also sometimes a bit of a high fat before bed as well because yeah. again that free ups that, tri- that tryptophan. Yeah. And there's one particular um, study that, that, that I think it's cherry tarts. I think you can get cherry tart juice okay. and that is also uh, linked to increasing that non-REM sleep yeah um, but like I say it's very early research and I think that Australia is actually the leading um, country that's looking in that area yeah. to, to improve I think you're getting pretty good here yeah. in the, yeah. the sports science definitely yeah. we've got some of the best like you look at some of the unis we've got and things mm. coming out but it's interesting because like you train very late yeah. comparative to me because I know that if I train late it affects my sleep so I try to go like yeah, when Revo's not wanting to 
kill people in there at <laughs> four or five o'clock. I'd been trying to go around two, three o'clock yeah. now. And um, where Sean will train after clients. So sometimes yeah. that's not until 7.38 and then he's eating 6,000 calories a day yeah. and coming home. And then he's like, if he doesn't get a meal in as soon as he comes home, he's like, well, there's no point eating. He's like, because I won't be able to sleep. Like, yeah, you yeah, finally yeah. So my was, payoff is do I eat the, because I'm on 6,500 calories. Yeah. I, Jealous. My, my, <laughs> my post-workout is generally a minimum of 1,500 calories, sometimes yeah. 2,000 calories, which is easy to eat, but, but then I know I'm going to be full for quality too. Yeah. Yeah. hours afterwards and I won't be able to sleep. So where's the payoff there? It's like, do I get the sleep as the priority or do I get the food as a priority? And then when you've also got ADHD in the mix, you can't really have fast digesting no. foods like cereal or yeah. know, things Sugars. like that that you yeah. get in because, yeah. Yeah, I mean, it depends on how the uh, the sugar and stuff have an effect on you, but it's the, uh, as long as you're having you know, high glycemic foods an hour prior to going to sleep, actually, there's been some beneficial research mm. suggesting yeah. that can increase the amount of REM sleep you get. Carb backloading. Yeah, 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 carb backloading is, and again, you know, get that insulin insulin spike and that with leptin is also meant to have and that. And that was interesting how you just said, though, then high fat as well. Yeah, so, I mean, so, the research yeah. is very conflicting. Yeah. Because, but that's to do with just freeing up the free trip to fans. Yeah, so, so it's different purposes yeah yeah, so, yeah. Figure, so then you have to figure out with the person well what is the thing you're struggling with yeah you know, is it tryptophan exactly or is it and then it's fitting yeah. the calories it's fitting mm. their consumption overall it's so way more it, complex it is it's not just yeah. looking at okay, Kate right you need to sleep let's eat more this is this. why you have a job yeah yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> so when people say to us you know uh, what should I eat to fix my digestive Tell issues roughly, and I'm like eat. I have to know so many variables yeah. about your guts. Like it's not yeah, as yeah. easy as cut out gluten. Like you'll be fixed. But yeah, it's way more complex. Mm. So figuring out and like anyone listening that has really bad sleep, like this is going to give you very general ideas. But you really need to see a specialist at the end of the day. Yeah, like, I think we yeah. just kind of don't give it enough. I think we want to make people aware thought. of how important it is. Because yeah. you can yeah. speak to someone who says, oh, "I don't sleep very well," which is a lot of people, and he can say, "Okay, if you were going to improve your sleep, how would you improve it?" I bet you they could list. 10 of the things we've said already yeah. but they just don't do them well, that's it's like, it it's like people wanting to lose weight and you, like, everyone knows how to lose weight, weight. Oh, I need to move more eat less, less. Yeah. You've, and you've, it. you can't just go right I'm just going to make my room dark and yeah. all of a sudden fix it yeah. you've got Didn't to work. you've got to take all these into consideration and go okay right actually with all of these I'm probably going to improve my sleep but if you just go right phone's out the window well phone yeah, yeah. Right, yeah throw, throw the phone out the window phone's outside the door is that really going to have an impact on your yeah. sleep? And then also, you've got to also do that over time. You can't expect your sleep to be fixed in yeah. one night. That's something interesting I want to ask you because, yeah, in all transparency, our sleep's been crap the yeah. last few weeks. But my goal and my work's starting to quieten down a bit now. So my plan is to start to really focus on my lifestyle variables yeah, okay. and really get some good sleep back in. Is there any, I guess, yeah, reference in terms of time they show that will improve sleep? So say I've been deprived for the last two to three weeks mm -hmm. and I've been getting an average of I think it's about six hours a night on my Garmin whether or not we're going to how accurate they are but if I'm then wanting to get back to a point where I feel back to 100% because I don't feel 100% so I'm feeling 75, 80 yeah how long do you feel like it's going to take me of getting a few nights of consistent eight hour sleep to start to feel physiologically back to my best? That's an interesting question because uh there's a lot of professors that argue over whether you can kind of repay your mm. sleep debt or whether you know you can I'm screwed for life <laughs> yeah and some some say that you can and some say that you you can't and it's really conflicting but my best advice for you is that saying you know say for example you've been going to sleep what time what time have you been going to sleep tonight recently 12 30 yeah. so so let's just that's being nice yeah. <laughs> yeah. okay so so work slowing down i'd say by the time i usually go to sleep it's one yeah one o'clock yeah and okay. i've been waking up at 6 30 yeah Okay, so that's yeah five and a half hours. Which going back to that study, of five I do and not half recommend hours. this class because <laughs> um, of you guys. <laughs> but life out of factors, as long as you're yeah. not doing that your no, whole life, I'm, 30, no. 40 years. Yeah. What I would recommend is let's make these small increments. Yeah. So rather than saying, okay, I'm going to go Aiming to for eight. Yeah. yeah. Let's, let's let's try and be in bed by half twelve. Yeah. Cool. Let's yeah. go and try and go to bed. And do that for five days, and then see if we can get bed at twelve o'clock. Yeah. And it's building that behavior. And if you just do all of a sudden, you go two hours, you're going to sit there and you're going to be like, oh, I've got to move yeah. away. Yeah. I need to be doing stuff. But if you make that even, and it's for you, just like with you know, calories on a refeed, like how, mm. uh, how many do you step up? If you do it incrementally, mm. you're not going to make that, you're not going to feel that much difference. Yeah, but yeah, over so a space of eight weeks, all of a sudden you've built yourself up to another two, two hours. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, especially if, like you said, your brain's so used to the behavior of whatever you've been doing at 10 o'clock at mm. night 
has been work and yeah. then all of a sudden you're trying to say to your brain yeah. no go to sleep now and it's like no no yeah, like, yeah. Like half an hour an hour you know yeah, yeah sure so, and that's yeah. where the melatonin potentially yeah. some of the scientific research says it can help back is, on it. Is, yeah. is shift in, is shift what about 5-HTP uh, 5-HTP, again, is just a precursor to serotonin, so yeah. that's going back to the tryptophan. So tryptophan converts into 5-HTP, yeah. and this, there's some research suggests that can increase, um, decrease sleep latency so people can get to sleep easier. Yeah. And perhaps... That worked well for me. Yeah. I found I got more from that than melatonin. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But it's illegal over here, though, isn't it, to get... Melatonin has to be prescribed. Well, yeah, so melatonin, melatonin has to be prescribed, yeah. but you can't actually buy 5-HP... 5, 5-HTP. So, no, I snuck some back from the US, yeah. and that's because you can buy it there. You can buy melatonin over the counter there as well. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, over the counter there. You can buy yeah. a lot of stuff over the counter there that you what can I get back. Now. What I do <laughs> want to say though is that you are buying melatonin over the counter. The the Probably it's not. yeah. Um, the, I don't the, think it was as strong as the spray when I got prescribed. Yeah. Remember we saw yeah. that health food shop? They had all of these like. Uh, they had DHEA, they had this melatonin. In, this was here in Australia. I'm pretty sure they were just herbs. It must have just been fakes. Yeah, so, yeah. People are selling fakes. Or, um, yeah. There might homeopathic. be 3% it, I think stuff it was in there. Homeopathic. Yeah. 3% so, all the way up to 300%. You don't know what you get in. So it's yeah, good. if your naturopath's giving you melatonin, it's probably not melatonin. No, <laughs> yeah. it, it just needs to be su- prescribed. Prescribed, yeah. 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 Exactly. Same with like DHEA. It was yeah. like, yeah, that's not probably DHEA. So let's, yeah, I guess touching on supplements, obviously the big one, you know, magnesium. Mm-hmm. What is okay? So if we broke down like the purpose of melatonin, yeah, what would be the type of symptoms presenting where you would prescribe that over, say, just getting someone to take <coughs> magnesium? Because you know, there's all these theories that magnesium is more for muscle recovery, yeah. this and that melatonin is more brain and cognitive. What's your yeah? Which ones that you would look at there? Melatonin is more for um, shifting people's sleep phases. So if they are particularly sleeping late and getting up late, and they want to move that, then it can be useful there and if people have jet lag as well okay uh, it could be, a, be very useful for for jet lag and if you're f- with we'll talk about jet lag quickly with jet lag if you're flying east mm-hmm. it takes a roughly about um an hour for every day that you're uh, a day for every hour that you go over a time zone so say yeah. if you're flying over to the east coast yeah it's going to take you what three or four hours to get over that small amount of jet lag if you're going west is particularly for every half. It's, it's half a day for every hour. Yeah. So you, when you're following the sun, it's easier to get over that jet lag. Yeah. 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 But the, the the research suggests that actually taking melatonin uh, pr- prior to um, while you're on the, on the airplane and setting that time zone already pre pre flight can actually help. So uh, take it de- a little earlier. Yeah. yeah. So de- decrease in your jet lag. Well, we found that when we flew to. England, mm-hmm. they dimmed the lights in the aeroplane. It was a dreamliner, wasn't it? Mm. They dimmed the lights in the plane very early. The the planes have got it all wrong. And mm. I flew back to England just recently, and I was I was kind of annoyed because they <laughs> stay. Should have gone and said to them. Yeah, yeah. 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 yeah they because I was like I'm I'm really particular with it when I fly yeah, when I fly back to, yeah when I fly back to England I'm right right okay I even I change my my, my, my phone and yeah. my, my watch yeah, to, to the time same. time where I'm going. And you book flights that like you know, you know, yeah, yeah book flights so I'm landing in the morning so yeah. I feel like I'm you know I'm waking up and then you know, stay it, it, yeah staying awake for the whole day so then I can get back to sleep again, but. Airplanes seem to just they just go on when, what's convenient for them. Mm. So, when they want to feed people yeah. and when they if want it's, to if, it's, if it's a night if it's a night flight, all of a sudden you take it off at night, they'll they'll dim the lights, so they don't even have any perception of, of when you're when landing. You're going, yeah. And then they might dim the lights for when you're landing into the all of a sudden into the the, the morning. And mm. it's like, hold on a second. No, no. Yeah, so they're not thinking about getting on to the next time zone, they're just no. like, we'll just stand the one we're in because it's convenient for our staff and you know, yeah. that's the priority. Yeah. So I guess they're looking after their sleep, maybe yeah. if they're yeah. flying back or whatever. Yeah. But people who are taking melatonin as well, it has a massive placebo effect. So continue to take it even if you, if, it's, if you feel yeah. like it's working for you. But it, I'm that with magnesium. I feel yeah. like that too. Like, it's, yeah. it's, it goes back to that habit. Like yeah. I'm ta- even for me, like I'm taking that magnesium. Okay, now I'm feeling like I'm I'm setting up to go to sleep. Yeah. But there is some uh, going back to that parasympathetic nervous system. There is some suggestion. Yeah, it can it can help promote more parasympathetic activity. And regardless, most people in Australia are deficient in magnesium, so it's mm. like just take it yeah, anyway. Yeah. <laughs> Especially yeah. If you train. Yeah. yeah. And I mean, what you do just popped out of the room when we mentioned it, but it's um, uh, particularly in athletes to get restless legs. Yeah. And restless legs is linked to defi- and magnesium yeah, deficiency. Yeah. Or also iron deficiency. I get it when well. I train really heavy. Yeah. So when I do like yeah. singles or doubles or yeah. super heavy deadlifts or squats, I'll get restless legs. It's yeah. You just, well, you're frying a nervous system. Yeah. Yeah. Just yeah. Like, all of a sudden, like, Intensity. Yeah. yeah. 
Chamomile tea as well. Yeah, chamomile tea. Is, he does. I'm not a tea yeah. drinker. Yeah, I have to really force myself to get it yeah. done. But yeah. yeah. Again, um, English. Yeah, it's, <laughs> yeah. He's a big so tea drinker. Yeah. 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 You are very stereotypical. I don't eat cucumber sandwiches though. You probably would. I don't mind cucumber in my sandwich. What about peanut butter sandwich? Uh, yeah, I'm all about. Do you know what she has? She has uh, peanut butter on toast with cheese on the top. Melted grilled cheese. Melted cheese. Well, cheese. Well, Try it. it. Don't knock it until you. I haven't tried it. Potentially, it could be good for going to sleep too. Exactly. Yeah. 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 what's in it? The cheese, the PB. It was like one of the things my dad used to have before bed. Yeah. So, you know. Father is on to something. He was also on sleeping pills. but uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, restless legs is uh, also can contribute to periodic limb movements, which is just little twitches during your sleep. And mm. that's linked to lack of iron, lack of magnesium. And that yeah. can be disrupting people's sleep. Yeah. So if you're, And also, yeah, if you're in a yeah. dieting phase yeah. or whatever. And that's why I like, because we're not massive supplement persons, but when my clients are in a deficit I'm more so really hammering them on the magnesium and the zinc Mm. because I'm like we are probably getting less nutrients from food so Mm -hmm. like and you're training more and you're recovering less so like it's looking at all of those variables really as well so I find I also get restless legs when I'm not sleeping enough yeah like it tends to come on more and I'll tend to I don't know, wake up more in the night when my sleep's generally yep. worse. When I'm sleeping in a good pattern, I don't tend to wake up and it's solid. Yeah. So is there, I don't know the way to explain that, but that was a question that I got asked a lot was, if I'm waking up at night, what is the best thing to do, really, was the big question. If you're waking up at night and you can't get back to sleep, yeah. don't go. Don't stay in your bedroom. Okay. So go into a different room. Yeah. Do some. Don't turn your TV on. Maybe have a, a light book or a magazine that you want to read. And when you start to feel sleep, sleepy again, go back to your bedroom. Because what you don't want to do is associate your bedroom with poor sleep. Mm. Because yeah. psychologically, you're like, oh, again, I've got to go to bed and I can't sleep. I've never been able to sleep in this bed. And you get this habit. And that's what again, causes insomnia. Yeah. So leave the room. Go away. Maybe have um, you know, a cup of have milk. Have a wild tea. Oh, yeah. A bit of turkey. Yeah, a little, a little bit of turkey. If you yeah. want to get your protein hit and your tryptophan in the middle of the night, <laughs> then as soon as you're tired, go back to sleep again. And is there any reason for some people having that alertness or do you think it's to do with the, what they're doing before bed that's causing yeah. that? The, the, the phone's the major one. Yeah. You, know, you can have that phone in front of your eyes and you, you're shifting your melatonin a little bit later on yeah. in the evening. So you, you know, you might fall asleep is that actually it's still there the maintenance. in the back of your yeah. head. It's like, yeah, you were still yeah. checking your phone or, yeah. But what we call it sleep maintenance is the, the brain is still thinking, hold on a second, there's a light there. Should I be yeah. awake? Should I be asleep? And it goes back to all those firing neurons that are in the brain of which way inhibitory or or, or no, excitatory or, um, mm. and it's just like well, I'm, I'm yeah. confused all of a sudden what which makes sense in our situation because the nights that like I was saying I wake up are the nights I've gone to bed really late are the nights that I've literally gone from computer to bed yeah. and not had that yeah. that, that sleep, period yeah. and tried to force getting yeah. into sleep when you're still thinking about work so I am going to um, go through a couple of my questions that I've had because you've gone through my I have one, ones one more if I could quickly okay you do that one because somebody's asked in my question question about sleep about hip thrust so I think that was the other question I posted today. Well, so, yeah. okay. um, can you just hip thrust help you sleep <laughs> just say yes well, hip thrust for everything it's good for your glutes yeah. Yeah. So you get extra cardio that's for guys yeah. really you know it's going to be a bit more difficult if it's mm. a girl okay ask what was yeah. the last one you um, got I suppose it's a similarity to jet lag but uh, is with night shift workers mm, yes it's a big one it's a hard yeah. one I've got a couple of clients who are five for night shift workers yep would they is melatonin a good one for them and what do they do about when they go to day to night shifts <laughs> yeah. well I'm going to start off with the World Health Organization of the label night shift as a type 2 carcinogen now Wow. Really? <laughs> wow there you go night workers so talking about serious brain damage yeah, 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 wow. it, yeah so cancer yeah it's been well, linked massively to breast cancer it's, it's, a ma- it's a massive thing I, yeah. I, I'm asleep no, sleep scientist, and I refuse to do night shift. Mm. Yeah. So I don't actually set anyone up in the night, and I don't observe them in the night. I just set them up in the evenings or see their you know, the results in the day. Yeah. And I've done that from day one because I, because I, as, as a person who trains, as a person who trains as well. Yeah. I don't, and it's also being a hypocrite, you know, like yeah. I'm a sleep specialist, but oh, exactly. I'm going to work at night. Yeah. Like, yeah, same for me right yeah. now. You probably need to do these yeah. things. Do you find it's worse? With people that um, are constant night shifts, so their job is all the way night shift, or people that do like days, nights, that sort of variability. No one can ever really adjust to being a night shift worker, although it's better to be consistent, because when you're swapping and changing, your body is just not, it's not knowing when to produce melatonin, when to have cortisol rising, it's just all over the place. I always find they're the worst, uh, most drowsy clients as well. And they hit the most plateaus. 
and it's brutal. Your your ability to um, uh, pain receptions increased as well when you have lack of sleep and those people. So you'll probably find actually you know, people who should be doing an RPE of five are doing yeah, like sevens shocking. and eights. It's mm. like what's going on here? Yeah. And there are emotions all over the place because your ability to regulate that. There's two parts of your brain that you kind of regulate emotions with: the prefrontal cortex, which is like your rational part of your brain, is where you're making all your decisions, and then you've got your amygdala, which is like your monkey brain. And the actual activity in the amygdala, in the amygdala increases when you're sleep deprived, so it makes you very irrational. It makes you go from a person who could be laughing one second mm. to being, you know, to angry the next bipolar. second. Mm. Yeah, and it's almost you know, ADHD, bipolar. They're all a lot of people are saying, reckon, thinking that probably depression it, as well. Yeah, depression know. is a massive link. Look, five hour work is in depression, right? Mm. Like yeah. sleep deprivation, Terrible. doing fourteen it hours is. and then and struggling it, to switch off, or they take pre workouts, or they there's a huge li- there's a huge link. Yeah. There is, and it, no, it's back by all the science. It's it, so it is it, it's night shift. If you can get off it, then yes. If not, then I would try and keep it so it's at least consistent. consistent. Chopping and changing all the way over. You want to be paid three times the amount you are. Nurses, I feel for them. Yeah. Like they uh, they have one of the hardest jobs, mm-hmm. and then they're also sleep deprived and split shifts all the time. Like yeah, they're nice nurses, and I'll try to structure their nutrition and training, and I'll be like, "Cool, send me your like your shifts for the next whatever," and they're like, "Oh, they change every week." And yeah. I'm like, "How are you supposed to get any form of re- like routine in your life? Like, not to mention the impact on training, which is like your overall like." lifestyle mm. like it's just yeah I've got massive respect for nurses because they've yeah. got to so they've got to like be so positive and happy all yeah, the time yeah. as well and it's got and it's, do with people's well, problems that's yeah. it it's got all it is is moaning people yeah. moaning people yeah. moaning people moaning people no one's grateful in hospital nah no. oh, they that. say gratitude to the doctor not the nurse a lot of the yeah. time yeah. You know? yeah. the doctor yeah. takes credit and yeah. then they're the one that's actually you yeah. know doing all the dirty work a lot of the time so yeah it's a it's, yeah tough industry like what can you do like if people are passionate about that career then it makes it challenging really if you can get off it get off night shift yeah do if you know if, if your health is your priority yeah then 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 certainly get off the night shift but uh i don't want to scare people into <laughs> to, to quitting jobs yeah, now yeah. and being honest and you know, just because of the health let's look in the long term if you can get out of it then and that's i guess coming back to mums again too like how important mums need to prioritize their sleep as best they can yeah. and I think a big one with mums is they get scared to ask for help. Mm-hmm. Like, and my female clients, oh, my husband's got to work his nine to five, so I don't want him to be tired. Yeah. And it's like, well, he can get up once in the night. Yeah. You know no, what I, I mean? Like, I yeah. do believe in sharing. I yeah. do believe that. Yeah. A woman has a lot of responsibility with, with a child, especially if they're yeah. you know, staying at home and looking after a child and the men's going to work. And it's like, he gets to get away from it for like. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And it, it's, it's good to integrate the, you know, the man into sharing of that course. because it's almost yeah. like you've got that family and you want to keep that. You want to yeah. keep that responsibility. But. If it gives why them, women probably get postpartum depression, like it sleep is. deprived, lack of help, stress, unhappy. Well, they've, they've, they've had a baby and all of them realise that their partner's not as supportive they hoped they'd be. Mm. Mm. Watch it, Sean. <laughs> We've had some good discussions about this. I mean, we're Hopefully very, we're very blessed in our careers, you know, yeah, yeah. like the fact that Sean can come home and, you know, and then we can kind of chop and change. But some yeah. people don't have that luxury. So I think that it's, yeah, really just not being scared to ask for mm-hmm. help in that scenario. If you need to, and you've got the financial, you know, things to hire, hire yeah. a nanny for a couple of hours just so you can sleep. Like, yeah. if you've got the money there, what's more important at the end of the day? Like, your sleep or a bit of 50 bucks a week to have That's someone it. to just like... Yeah. I'm all about that, like doing things that can keep your sanity at the end of the day, even if it's going to cost you a little bit of yeah. money. Like, and talk about it. Yeah. Don't, don't just because you're sleep deprived because you've got a child. Don't think that's 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 normal. the way it has to yeah. be. Yeah, and think it's normal. That's interesting you say that because I have a girlfriend who's been very ruthless with her kids' sleeping pattern, and she was talking to us about having kids, and we just heard all these mums whinge about it, and then we chatted to her, and she's in fitness industry too, she's PT, and her partner, he's awesome dude, she's probably listening to this, and she said to me feel bad but I get a lot of sleep and I was like why do you feel bad and she goes because I'm going to all these mums groups and like I get like eight hours solid sleep like sometimes me. ten and she goes but I've been ruthless with the yeah. routine and she's also said my son's got to fit with my life too she's like I need sleep I need to function and I need to have a career as well so and she's a great mum like but she feels judgment sometimes because all these other mums are like oh well, I'm exhausted and I'm, yeah, I'm always there sweet. for my kid and it's yeah. like yeah. it's a fine line I think like, yeah. I think you've got to remember in those situations that sleep is a behaviour 
so you have to kind of remember to train your kid in a way yeah because right? if you're not sleeping they're not gonna sleep exactly like, so vice versa. i mean they, yeah. they, they tend to sleep more mm. but if you can try and get it so that you're you get in the routine and a pattern and you you're creating that go back to the environment again where you at night time you're slowing things down you're creating this calming you know, space, ca- calming yeah. calming space for but your screaming child screaming at them and throwing yeah. a computer in their face mm. or an ipad and being like shut up yeah, like, that, yeah <laughs> that's it and yeah i think you, you I, I'm sure it's true. I don't know the, the evidence, but I'm sure the babies embody the emotions of of, of the you know, the parents, partic- particularly their, their their mother. So if, yeah. if you're relaxed and you're calming down, you're you're not full of anxiety, and then your your baby's more likely to be able to, mm-hmm. to, to sleep in those situations and, and as well. And that's probably a tip for like the hubbies and the men is like even if you can't physically help with the baby because say their baby age and they need breastfeeding and mm-hmm. blah blah. blah and the mum's a calming influence will then maybe help the woman with other things around the house yeah. so she's not stressed yeah, so if yeah. you can go do the dishes or Cooking, cleaning, you know make her dinner yeah. and she can be with the baby calming it down and then also boys you're probably going to be you know more than likely to probably get some action get because late. then she's happy because you know like yeah, happy that's, wife, yeah. Happy yeah. Life. and you know is there links with having sex before bed and like better sleep like orgasm before bed um so let's because I definitely find I sleep better. Like, yeah, let's yeah. Think, think of the science of this. So it, it, it's been shown that if you have an orgasm alone, so masturbation, oh, you, okay. you, you have uh, you know, dopamine, which actually can stimulate the mind. So, so actually, then you won't sleep as much. But when oh, you okay. but when you have an orgasm, you're rewarded yourself. Yeah, and it's and <laughs> yeah. But when you have an orgasm with a partner, you're actually releasing uh, oxy, is it oxytocin, oxytocin, and and then you're more likely to increase serotonin, okay. mm. which is the precursor to yeah. melatonin. So okay. that, that yeah, that makes sense that you yeah. actually. Interesting. I think I'm like a boy, like it's done, and then I'm just asleep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So sure. Because I get the reward because I made you orgasm. <laughs> yeah. so I don't sleep. <laughs> I'm so excited. Yeah. Yeah. You're welcome. Yeah. <laughs> it's like win check yeah. check. So no orgasm for you. <laughs> so it should work. Maybe in the morning morning yeah so that's an interesting one and i've got okay i'm going to pull up these questions some of them to finish off because we have been going for an hour and a half so yeah. we'll finish it off on these um so we'll get your maybe top five tips yeah to simple it tips off. so okay. have been asked for recommendations of good pillows um we were chatting about this before out there but i don't think we touched on it in here again kind of comes back to the individual so what would be your recommendations yeah i mean there's no particular pillow that i know of but um if i think if you're a side sleeper you you generally want to be you know, especially if you're broad if you're you know you're, you're a weightlifter and you've got wide shoulders you're going to be a little bit higher so you're not crushing your neck's not creaking mm-hmm. um so harder pillows for mm-hmm. side sleepers and then softer pillows maybe for uh back for, for back sleepers what about stomach sleepers again i would probably say soft Mm. soft pillows do you discourage people from sleeping on their stomachs no not no, really fine, if anything yeah. we discourage from sleeping on the back yeah. but that's only related to snoring and sleep apnea yeah, yeah okay because that's probably something to touch on then so with sleeping on the side though potentially you're going to get like structural imbalances because mm-hmm. of poor mm-hmm. posture so then you're saying you know don't sleep on your back because of breathing yeah then your side you might have problems there so yeah. what is the best way to like lay in bed well I can't sleep on the front purely because I have a penis <laughs> well, actually, <laughs> testosterone surges and then and your yeah. boobs hurt when you sleep on the sleep. front exactly. yeah it hurts your tits yeah. so yeah, yeah. Um, sorry what was the question again <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, um, as soon as you what, say boobs there you go even is, a scientist goes yeah. is there an optimal sleep position yeah I think it's just whatever you can get your comfort to be honest with you yeah. um, some people say you know, the fetal position is, is most common because that's what we do as babies but I don't think there's any as kind of as a kid I used to sleep my legs in the air on a wall oh, yeah yeah okay. so on my back with yeah. my legs against mm. a wall probably rest his legs um, great excellent sleep mum would come in I'd slap in a bunk bed with my brother and I'd have my legs up on the um, slats yeah, yeah. that's excellent interesting because you'd increase your blood flow to the core so you would think you'd actually warm the core and it wouldn't work yeah, opposite. actually yeah. yeah warming the extremities in cold and cooler weather can actually drop the body temperature and can and um help you sleep so if you're yeah. in a cold area i was actually, living in it's, tasmania it's yeah. Socks. Cold. Yeah. yeah where socks and uh, gloves on your hand can yeah. actually increase uh, you know, your ability to sleep interesting so there's no optimal pillow there's no, no optimal sleep position. i don't think so i think you just got to make sure that you, you're you're not spending too much time on one position and if you yeah. are then do as soon as you get up to get you know, get some stretching in there yeah people don't move enough as it is no. so get up and spend five minutes in the morning i'm a big believer in that like especially if you're going to go to a nine to five job yeah like it's literally five minutes if you say you don't have five minutes like you're lying like yeah. you know you i bet you're spending time on instagram like you yeah, know so, yeah. i mean i obviously i work behind 
found an office from nine till five. And when I m- first moved here, uh, before in England, I used to walk to work. So there's a lot of, I walked like an hour, an hour and a half mm, a day. Yes, and then when I moved here, it's too far to go anywhere. So I was from the car straight into the office yeah, top. <laughs> and then straight onto the desk. And I was like, my, my hips were screwed. And I was mm. like, after about a year, I'd put on so much weight. I put on about seven kilos because of the reduction in steps yeah, and meat. And then yeah. I started getting real problems with my hips. And I was like, right, I'm going to have to do something about it. And that's when I started doing yin yoga before mm. bed. And actually, that's when I realized, actually, that helps me sleep a lot mm. because it's all about calming yourself down as much as you can. Yeah. I think, like, we got into this society for a while where, like, a few years ago, the trend in the fitness industry was do less. And it was almost, like, similar to what Sean posted about on Instagram. But, like, it was almost like a bad thing mm. if you were, like, doing cardio mm, or doing that. Yeah. But to be honest, for me, because I used to be a PT, I reckon when I was PTing, I was doing 20, 25,000 steps a yeah, day. Yeah. And I was at uni, so I was walking around the campus, all that. I, If I don't actually physically go for a walk, I will do three or 4,000 steps a day because I also work from home. Mm-hmm. So I don't even have to get in my car to drive to go somewhere. So, <laughs> And my lower back's tighter. My weight definitely is increased. I have to yeah. actively do things now that to move and be mobile like, and yeah we mi- i missed it at the very beginning the, the second biggest common reason for people can't sleep is pain yeah tightness and immobility. tightness in the back yeah. of their hips yeah. shoulders yeah. That- i find if you look at um a lot of people's common issues it's we always find it's internal rotation of the shoulders and the hips yeah, yeah. and if you think about how you're sleeping is internal rotation of the shoulder and the hips yeah. that's why a lot of simple things i prescribe to a lot of my clients is external rotations of their shoulders yeah. every upper body session external mm. rotations of the hips every lower body session yeah. really you should do that every day yeah mm-hmm. yeah you know? especially if you've got a partner and you're spooning you, you know, and you're a man yeah. and he's got your arm underneath yeah. stuck into it for yeah. like four we're not, hours yeah. Yeah. we're not um, spooners <laughs> see you in the morning yeah, yeah. 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 too hot yeah, he's too clammy. Yeah. yeah. I'm too heavy. Hint, hint to my partner if you listen to this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm not a spooner. I'm like, all right, I'm out. You're like one numb. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I'll only spoon the dogs because they're light. But yeah. um, okay, so that was a good one. Um, cool. Next questions that we will finish up on. How much is too much REM sleep? Is there too much? And I'm like, well, how can you really stop yourself doing that? But um, and is REM the worst part of a sleep cycle? So you kind of answer that. It's not really the worst, but it's less quality. Yeah, like less. No, deeper. no, no. REM REM sleep is just required for a different function. Yeah. So we need REM sleep to regulate yeah, emotions. It's not a bad thing. So yeah. dreaming essentially is kind of like your, your 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 conscious and your subconscious kind of submerging, and then your your new skills and everything that you're not aware of is just coming around. So that's what it's so random but it's they, they associate dreaming and REM sleep to do with regulating emotions if we didn't have REM sleep then we'd pretty much be not be learning about what's going on around us we'd be fearful of everything mm-hmm. so it's really important that we get that and it's crucial for memory uh, function as well there isn't too much REM sleep but there is too much sleep in, in, general. in general so yeah. more than nine hours sleep you okay. start to get the same um, health issues as you would if you had less than seven hours gotcha. sleep. so I can't do the whole banking sleep because that's something I used to try to do on the weekend so I go yeah. like Monday to Friday six to seven hours and then yeah. the weekend I'd try to do like eight or nine I'd wake up Sunday real tight so mm. that would be why because I was it, probably oversleeping then it's different the for the athletic population because if you do get people who are training really hard then yeah. you, you might be able to extend sleep and there is actually some good research suggests that in, um, in it was in, done in basketball players and in the latter half of their uh, season they actually extended sleep to, to, ten, to well, 10 to 11 hours in bed Gee. and they actually increased their sprint times and their free throw so they there is some research that suggests that actually in areas where you potentially could be overtrained, yeah. increase in sleep could be beneficial. Yeah, okay, interesting. So it might be, and I've actually, I've given this a little bit of thought, if you are, um, and you'll know, never make any drastic changes, but you, one year you might want to look at when you're competing, mm. in those latter phases, actually extending the amount of time that you're spending in bed. Yeah. And just see whether that works see one season. See where the body composition comes and in see, a little. Yeah. Yeah, interesting. Okay, so a few, yeah, similar common questions, to be honest, guys. Like, a lot of this stuff really was covered at the start. A lot of saying how how to wind down, I can't get to sleep, or I go to sleep and I wake up, how to be tired when it's bedtime. Like, all of these things are coming back to exactly what you covered at the start, which is look at what you're doing that few hours before bed. Look at, like, really your habits, your behaviors, your actions. Um, or, like, if you're not tired, maybe you're going to sleep too early. Yeah. Are you trying to force something? Like, yeah. is that kind of a problem? A rule would be to, if you're not tired, wait until you're tired. Go to bed when you are tired. What about if you're like Sean and that's not till, like, 1 a.m.? Mm. 
then you, melatonin. Well, well, <laughs> not, no, not particularly. But if Sean, if you're not getting up until seven thirty, eight o'clock, yeah, then that so. might be that might be just that your your, your time, time mm-hmm. just, yeah. just to sleep that. But and, I actually don't mind getting up earlier, so I think I do need that shift in time in the sleep. Yeah. So it would be nice to go to bed earlier, but I find I'm very productive at night. Yeah, mm-hmm. and that's well. If you go back to the evolutionary, right, there's, there's night owls and there's, uh, there's there's the larks, and it's funny you say that being a male and female because, in, in, from an evolutionary exp- uh, um, perspective, if you think about males, they're going to stay up later in yeah. the evenings to protect the family from predators. So yeah, it's well. actually so it's actually is a is a kind of a, a common uh, fact. I don't know if it's scientific or, or the evolutionary mm. believe it, but then females would get up early to feed the look children the and look after yeah. the kids. That's literally our household. Yeah, so yeah, we I get up early and I take the dogs yeah. out for a poop yeah. and yeah. We, 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 we do see that and it is also one of the biggest disruptors between fat relationships in terms of sleep and oh yeah that's a lot of these questions of how do I make my partner shut up or yeah. how do I yeah. and there, there is a I would I think it's up to around maybe 30% of people who are married actually don't sleep in the same room anymore wow I mean that was that night yeah mm. yeah I've heard um, some people say that's the best thing they did for their marriage yes yeah. and it's saved yeah, sleep it does, in separate it, rooms it saves because well, separate I guess beds. if someone's got really bad snoring or something like that and you're just like yeah, you know, yeah, kind and of so people, people actually see that, that they think, oh, you know, my my uh, my sex life's going to disappear because we're not sleeping in the same room. But it's it's commonly known that actually, it's if people are not sleeping at the same time, it's probably better because you spend that time away, and actually, the you only make reason it you, more of a priority. the yeah. reason you come to the room is to have sex, and that mm. actually results yeah. in people having a better sex life. Awesome. So I think the last couple, because I feel like a lot of these were pretty much answered yeah. throughout it. Big one, sleep trackers. Okay. What's yeah, the, yeah. yeah, how accurate are they? I'm literally wearing so we're, my he's now. I've, That was my old Fitbit, now I've got a Garmin. So we're testing Fitbit versus yep. Garmin. The Garmin says I sleep way more than what I do. It's lying to me. Yeah. So the Garmin <laughs> said I've been sleeping for like seven hours and I'm like, I have definitely not. Yeah. Whereas the Fitbit I found was more accurate. So yeah, going through any of these and maybe the best ones if people really want to... Uh, the Fitbit and the Garmin haven't been validated, so there's no scientific studies out there to say what it works on or whatever. It yeah. works. It, they basically work on movement, and mm. um, they try to integrate the pulse rates just because in those different phases of sleep we get lower pulse rates and um, and, and, and lower and the core che- body temperature changes. That's probably the next thing they'll be looking at is mm. to see if they can detect body mm. temp- temperature at all. But the research suggests that the the aura ring, which is the probably the the best one for sleep, yeah. and that's only yeah, a sleep yeah, yeah, that's only a sleep tracker for looking at total sleep time and the amount of time that maybe you're awake in bed. It's around about eighty to ninety percent accurate, so it's reasonably good. But when you start to look at the stages and trying to look at whether you're in stage one or stage two, it's only around about fifty percent, and even less for REM and and non REM, and that's because the uh, sorry um, stage three, and that's because uh, REM sleep actually looks very similar to for wakefulness mm. on, a, on an EEG and, and the body is similar in a similar position apart from being paralyzed but the heart rate is similar. So they're not that great but what you can actually do is you can use that to track for over a month is there any particular days where your yeah, patterns looking for pattern recognition why is that is because you is that because when you look after the grandkids or is it when you um, could be females could be hormonal, hormonal yeah, and, yeah, yeah. And all those, those there's issues Through like that. Pain. Yeah, exactly. exactly. Um, there is uh, a new phase called um, orthophobia, which is actually people dis- disrupting their sleep because they are becoming so obsessed with tracking it. Mm. Yeah. yeah, and I think people, you know, especially if you're giving them to children, yeah. mm. people are giving them putting little trackers or stuff on their phones, and the kids are waking up in the middle of the night looking at their phones yeah. and mm. how long they sleep. Well, and, I find yeah. even the, the light on the Fitbits and stuff because obviously well, when you move, mm. the, the light goes off. So yeah. sometimes we, we take ours off at oh, night a lot because. Know. I'm like, yeah. well, they're obviously not that accurate sleep-wise, so I may as well just take the yeah. thing off and put it on the floor. Like, I mean, it is a good indicator for that sleep efficiency. Yeah. Reasonably, I say good. Yeah. It's, good is probably not a great word to use, but they're getting better. Yeah. So the next thing they'll use is they'll start to use more um, headbands, yeah. which then are trying to track what we're looking for when we actually do in sleep studies, all the electrical activity. And they, the the next step and phase with that is actually trying to prolong that um, 
that non that level three non non REM sleep, and what you can actually do is you can look at the frequency of the wave and you ha- and and how deep and how high that frequency and and how high the amplitude of that wave is, and you can play a sound that's a similar frequency and an amplitude, and that's okay. been shown to actually prolong yeah, that non yeah. REM sleep. And you know you often see if you look on YouTube, you can look at deep sounds, sleep, yeah. yeah, deep sleep sounds, and the research is actually looking quite strong there. That yeah. yes, you can do that, and they're trying to build that into. Um, into you know these so specific apparatus. sounds that you need. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and it, it's interesting because it's uh, not just like sounds of raindrops. Like no, no, no. I it's just it's like hums or a certain, a certain uh, you know depth or frequency. I can't the hertz. That's, that's yeah, the one. Yeah, okay. At certain levels, and that can then, if you prolong in uh, non-REM, you might get more restorative effects from that increases in yeah. growth hormone, testosterone. Uh, and might even be beneficial for Alzheimer's as well. So surely there'll be some app that comes out in a few years that has those sounds that you can play. Yeah, I think it, yeah. Philips have already got okay. maybe a head headband that's coming out. Yeah, okay. um, or has came out, but I, I don't think it's that good yet. But there's a lot of money going into it, as you can imagine. Mm. And is there any research into those more like you know the sleep noise machines and those things that you can get that are like yeah the sounds of waves and the sounds of this or more so. Because I had an ex-boyfriend that was a mm. shocking oh, sleeper, yeah. worse than you. He actually used to get night terrors. So he yeah. used to wake up in the night and I thought he was going to kill me. But he would just stand in the room. And it yeah. really freaked the fuck out yeah, of me. Yeah, because yeah. he was FIFO and he'd come back sometimes from swing at 3 a.m. And I'd be laying there in bed and then this figure would just be standing there. And I was like, what are you doing? Oh, pull the sheets off me. And yeah. I'd be sitting there. But he used to have to listen to the sounds of frogs or raindrops and obviously then I couldn't sleep yeah. but it used to help so, I think I think, yeah. it's, I think that goes, goes back to that meditation thing it's that like consistency of just hearing yeah. it I mean I love a ticking clock but that only goes back to because when I used to stay at my nan's when I was a child she had a ticking clock yeah. and it helped me go to sleep so it was probably as a kid he had something that was kind of noisy or his parents played a lullaby or yeah, whatever yeah. and that was going back to yeah. that it's helping you from it's stopping you from being distracted from you know, yeah. all your because some people say they mind. fall asleep like and I do I fall asleep very well on the couch watching a tv program or in the movies even mm-hmm. but then when i get into bed then i struggle to get back into yeah. sleep when it's completely silent so again it could be something to do with the the getting used to that noise and that bad habit it was just a bad habit really yeah. like that's all it is yeah. out training that habit so yeah interesting have you got any other ones you want to ask about no i think we covered them all to be honest i, I think we just wrap it up with um top tips top tips Tips for him, tips for her. Don't have to do separate sexes, but I would yeah, say. Is there good. any difference with male and female that you've seen in patterns of sleep or amount of sleep? Either? Just what we talked about, like the the night hours and the the yeah. larks. Just the early risers tend to be more females, and males tend to be uh, you know, late night. Well, you late see night that hours. in the gym in the morning. You go train at five a.m. Yeah. True, yeah, yeah, yeah. Watching yeah. Some, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 And I've, I mean, I've just started training at five thirty in the morning, yeah. and I've realised that my sleep has actually improved massively. Interesting. So, yeah, so maybe I think for you, Sean, it potentially yeah. could be something that you could look yeah. at. Yeah. And mm. I said, well, he's probably going to have to do that if we have kids anyway. Because yeah. I said, you're yeah. not coming home at nine o'clock. No. Like, you know, that's not realistic. So I think him training maybe for his afternoon clients, so mm-hmm. about one, two o'clock, and then going into sessions, I think yeah. that will be yeah, yeah interesting to see. Because you've done it a few times, but maybe getting into that better habit of training. I used earlier. to do it years ago. And I think that's something important to think for people to think about is, yeah, your choice of when to train and yeah. how that's going to impact on things, especially if you are someone that. Well, another thing, if I go train at six, seven o'clock at night, the gym's way busier. Mm-hmm. So my sessions get blown out you're and then grumpy. you're grumpy because you've had to wait 20 minutes for a squat rack longer. Whereas you go when it's quiet or when people are in there to get shit done. You've got the morning crowds very different to the night crowd in the gym. Mm. The morning crowd's like, I've got shit to do. I'm yeah. going to work. I need to leave by seven, yeah, six yeah. thirty. Yeah, whatever. The nighttime crowd's like, oh, let's have a chat. Dordle, like, yeah. Let's doodle. Hold yeah. this bench press for two hours. <laughs> Me and four of my mates are going to train yeah. together. Like, you don't see that in the morning in a gym. No, no so, you don't. It's so efficient. Yeah, so I think it's thinking about like all of those things that you might be doing instead of just complaining that the gym's always busy. It's like the gym's always going to be busy. So how can you shift are you going to become a morning trainer or mm. are you going to i don't know change to a different gym that's not as busy or whatever you've got to get done to yeah, that's what we've, that's what we've yeah. been doing <laughs> if, you, gym if, hopping. if you're a very hard trainer you train you know, real high intensity um which i don't think that many people do anymore yeah <laughs> <laughs> um but that can really impact your sleep yeah imagine so if, like crossfitters and stuff like that yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. and then those, those guys you're gonna have to train before 
five o'clock in the evening, mm. three o'clock in the evening, just because you know you're not going to settle. Yeah. Your body's just not going to want it. Yeah, especially if say you've got like, the, I guess the hard thing is people that have jobs that start early mm. and then obviously it's too early for them to get training in before, but then they're trying to wind down in the evening. So it's like, you're almost better off just going straight after work. Yeah. Then, in that situation, then going home for a few hours, yeah. dawdling about, yeah. and then going and training at six o'clock when the gym's yeah. packed. Like, yeah. And one thing we haven't really touched on, um, just want to touch on briefly, mm. but I don't, I don't know whether many of your uh, listeners will actually do it, but the actual well, alcohol itself, how does that yeah, affect sleep? Yeah, that's a pretty good one. So, I, yeah, I mean, we don't have a ton of our clients that drink, but definitely some of them. Yeah. yeah. The older generations just talk about the medicinal brandy. Yeah, but that's or, it. Or the red wine. Yeah, yeah, so there's that misconception that actually drinking helps you go to sleep. Because it's meant to be a what, depressant or... You know, yeah, when, so it's yeah. a depressant, so it, it might help you fall asleep earlier, but it's the, the, the actual quality. toxins that your body needs to get rid of. It can't process those during sleep, so it actually fragments the sleep like it would if you had obstructive sleep apnea. Interesting. So it's, it's, it almost sedates half the brain, so yeah, it actually you okay. won't be getting those um, deep... It reduces that slow wave sleep, that deep sleep. Yeah, okay. So it's actually real poor quality sleep. So alcohol's not going to help you sleep. Sorry, no. guys. Sorry That's to say it. That's step number no. one. <laughs> yeah. yeah. No alcohol. And <laughs> prior to bed. Um, I forgot. I had a really good point on that, and then it's gone completely blank. So if anyone has anything else while I'm trying to... This is from lack of sleep. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, my so, yeah, brain. exactly. My yeah. top five tips. Um, let's see if I can think of five. So, yeah, routine. Yeah. Bedtime. Um, same. Try and, make, try and make it at the same time. Uh, let's get consistent with that. Number two would be uh, dimming down the lights before, when the sun goes down. As soon as that sun's down, dim down the lights and gradually build those down uh, to the point where you're, you're, you you don't have any lights on in your house. And then don't go all of a sudden go to your fridge where you've got a fridge door yeah. with a don't light in it. And then don't brush your teeth mm. with, your, with your light on. Let's just try and keep a lamp on in the we'll corner of the room. See if that helps and proves. Number three, technology. Let's get it out of your room. Yeah. Uh, number four would be uh, avoiding alcohol and caffeine um, yeah. uh, marijuana as well that doesn't help with sleep and no, it doesn't it? no so it's uh, it actually re- it reduces and removes REM sleep oh, yeah. Okay. yeah interesting so, so, so many people are taking CBD or yeah. CBD is taking out the THC right. this, yeah, yeah. So THC yeah. that actually removes the, the REM sleep yeah. and uh, the CBD is actually can, can enhance that non-REM sleep yeah. so CBD has been shown I don't know whether there's been a lot of research on there because of what it so is new, yeah. yeah, so new but I think it has been shown to help promote more uh, you know, mm-hmm. deeper sleep um, if you can't get to sleep, let's let's potentially maybe have a, a a cool shower or in the winter have a warmer shower and so opposite yeah, temperature. yeah, and then the other one is just creating that environment. So really making that process of a habit of of what's your routine. Yeah, make your bedroom a place you want to go to. Yeah, like, yeah. yeah. If that means changing sheets or yeah, like you said, yeah, darker blinds or whatever it may be. Yeah, interesting. Sleep and sex. That's all the bedroom should be for. Sleep and sex, yeah. yeah. Or, you know, like we've said, self, self-love self doesn't self-love. help you sleep. Oh, Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So do that during the day. Yeah. <laughs> okay. That's your morning. That'll wake yeah, you that's up. That's my reward in the morning. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 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 We won't go that's into that. Why oh, last would. one. Your client. The weird rapey sleeper. <laughs> yes. uh, yeah. Yeah. We briefly I shouldn't touched I on take this. back using the R word, but... Yeah, you shouldn't use that word. Yeah. So. Sexually um, inappropriate sleeping. Yeah, yeah so yeah. he doesn't realise that he's doing it. So his missus, he convinces his missus that he is awake when in fact he's asleep and they end up having sex and he wakes up in the morning not knowing that they've had sex. So he doesn't even really get doesn't, to enjoy it because no, he doesn't, doesn't remember get, it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So she actually shouldn't be complaining because yeah. she's getting all the rewards. But is he pleasuring her or is it that'd be interesting to ask or if it's just about him yeah <laughs> is, yeah is he denying that just so he wants to get more sex because yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking of using yeah. <laughs> now there is a disorder called REM sleep behavioural disorder and it's essentially where you act out your dreams without even knowing that you've done them and there's been people who have been reported to yeah sexually harass people and not know uh, murder people will not know um, and interestingly when I first don't get any ideas to use this as an excuse yeah, well, by yeah. the way I'm in my sleep. <laughs> when I first started working um, uh, as training as a sleep scientist I remember having this couple come in to see me and this guy had REM behavioural sleep disorder and they were both in, in the room together and they'd just been diagnosed with it and they were talking to me about a treatment and essentially the treatment was just to, to, to sedate and remove the dreams so you don't act it out 
And his wife left the room for to go to the toilet and he's like, I really don't want to stop dreaming. It's the best thing in my life. It's like, essentially what happens is I'm in the, the, the final of this uh, the soccer game. It's the final, it's two all. And at the very end, I score this overhead kick and I, and, you know, I, I score the winning goal. And I, I wake up screaming and shouting because I'm so happy. <laughs> and he's like, but I don't want to lose that. <laughs> <laughs> he's got that good feeling. Yeah. yeah that's why like, you're made. It's like, you know. Because I'm six. Yeah. yeah, yeah. He's like, I don't want to lose that. But no. like. Yeah, it's inter- so is there a reason as to why some people have these sort of psychological things that happen? Or um, I mean, I don't know too much about it because it's not an area that I particularly specialise in. But it would be super di- common either. It, yeah, and it's not. It isn't. It's not. It's not too common. I mean, sleepwalking would be your yeah, the most right, common yeah. one, and sleep talking is is, a, is another one. Um, but they are. Uh, it's to do with the hormones and the and the the, the, yeah. the activity that actually is used to suppress and and. Um, uh, sedate our bodies and paralyze our bodies essentially those hormones are not basically regulated imbalance. right there are a bit of an imbalance there so, so that's what causes that's what causes those and it could be linked psychologically to trauma yeah. and issues like that something's but, happened that's what you think because i know like with my ex i know he won't listen to this but it's um he had drug abuse mm-hmm. like party drugs and stuff for a few yeah. years and ever since that that's when he had all these nightmares and these night terrors and waking up yeah. because obviously there's some stuff that's been messed up yeah, from yeah. that abusive behaviour. Stimulating the wrong yeah. neurotransmitters. Well, yeah, it is. It's 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 interesting because uh, the psychological the psychological thoughts of uh, what dreams are and there's a very famous psychologist called Carl Jung and he thinks it's uh, basically like the collective conscious. So it's it's. It's the trauma that's right at the back of the brain that we don't know of, and even potentially if, if the consciousness is connected in a way that it's other people's trauma that you're taking on as well. Mm. And it's a really interesting theory that he has, but it's it's, the, it's between your subconscious and the deeper subconscious that you don't even know of that can come up. So if people are having night terrors and having lots of them, there's often you know, issues that they haven't resolved in their mind that yeah. is trying to tell them something, it's trying to warn them something, it's saying, hold on a second, you've got something you that need you, need to re- you need to release yeah. this, you need to talk about about this that might be a problem for people that have obviously dealt with bigger things like sexual abuse or yeah. like parental yeah. abuse or whatever it is yeah, yeah. well why the, the brain the gets psychology comes in the brain gets rid of that yeah. because the because when when anything, anything that happens like that's a real trauma your brain doesn't it protects you yeah so it it, it, yeah it buries it so you mm. can't remember it now if you have a, a, a massive car accident uh, and, but people are not smashing their, their heads people often say oh, I don't remember anything that happened because your brain protects you from yeah. that and you can you can actually see in animals animals and humans are slightly different although we are just evolved animals is that when we have traumas animals uh, go through this almost phase of like shaking and that's apparently shaking off their the, the psychological trauma and whereas humans actually they they hold on to that trauma in their body mm. so we should be shaking it off but they hold on to it in their body and that's when people get tense and stiff in certain areas that's related to stress and that's where you know you, you you, in your natural paths and stuff we'll talk about that sort of stuff but in psychology there's actually evidence to support that yeah. yeah and even like you see that even in people in the gym like people that have immobility issues and mm. a lot of injuries and tightnesses and they're just generally like stressed out bound up people or people that yeah. have had trauma it's like they're holding on to that and it has to be I mean I guess there's probably not enough links with that type of stuff as well that people have gone into but it's very interesting like yeah basically everyone's just got to chill the fuck out <laughs> yeah. and we'll be <laughs> yeah better routine yeah, yeah. And, 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 and I think yeah. like you said you have to own your shit unfortunately you've got to kind of be real with yourself like you said before and go yeah this is a problem and I want to do something about it rather than just going oh I'm just a bad sleeper you know because mm. how often yeah, yeah. would you hear that in your profession where people are like just a bad sleeper just a bad sleeper yeah. just a light sleeper and then you go yeah. okay right let's have a look at your habits but then people don't want to admit yeah. their, yeah. their, their flaws so no one wants to look in the mirror and go okay what, what, what do I need to sort out and really yeah. we should all get to do that you stare, should, yeah. stare at yourself right in the eye in the mirror and go okay look what do I hear about my life right now Yeah. can I sort that out if I can sort that out then you'll find that you'll be sleeping better yeah because yeah. even when like me and Sean met Sean will probably get me annoyed at me for saying this but I we talked about it a few like months back or a year ago and I was like why do you feel like your sleep was so bad when we first like met because he wouldn't even have sleepovers at my house and so I thought it was a bit weird but <laughs> it was because he didn't want to disturb my sleep mm. because he didn't mm. sleep much so mm. he would like go to bed at 2, 3 a.m., wake up at, what, like, 6 or about 7, 7, so not much sleep. And then when we talked about it ages, like, after that, you were kind of like, you were in a weird place in your life at the time. Like, you kind of weren't fully 
you know, not unhappy, but like didn't really know where it was going. Like it was a bit like lost, got out of a bad relationship. Like was I, was he going to go back to England or was he going to go work on a cruise ship again? It was kind of like yeah. all related. It's a lot going through my mind. Mm. Yeah. And sleep was something I didn't prioritize either. Yeah. Like a lot of people. Yeah. yeah. And then you probably were on your computer and doing things. Yeah, watch TV. Yeah, yeah. And when you're single, it's like... Smoking the wrong type of weed as well. (laughs) (laughs) The THC in it. (laughs) But I think it's a problem for single people. I would say, like, a lot of my single clients struggle with sleep. And a big part of it's loneliness. Mm, like, and they'll say to me because they're like, well, they go to bed every night and they're thinking about being alone, mm-hmm. which is not a nice feeling if, yeah, that's yeah. What you're, if that's what you're focusing on. Obviously, like you can switch your thoughts and go, well, yay, I'm single and like, you know, yeah, it can be a right. good thing, you know, like. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know. Yeah. I know with my partner that if, you know, she's 20, 22 now and she's only young, but she says she's afraid. Like if, if I'm not around, she actually doesn't sleep very well. I think females especially, yeah. 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 So she's quite scared. So I think it's quite a, yeah. it can be a common thing. You know, people like to say a strong independent woman, but it's it, yeah. Yeah, part of you is, yeah, we do crave relationships at the end yeah. of the day. Yeah. And a part of us might be like, actually, no, I, I'm a little bit afraid to be in this house on my own. Well, my sleep got really bad, and I'll tell you a big turning point where you'll be like, well, that's what fucked you up. But I was just before I met Sean, and I was living with my old housemate, it was FIFO, mm. and I lived at the front of the house, it was in Scarborough, and one down one of these sort of laneways right near Revo, and he was sort of down the back of the house, and um, he just got back from swing, so he used to go out during the weeknight, it was like a Wednesday night, whatever. I was PTing at the time, so I had to get up pretty early, I used to go to bed about 10, get up about 5, and um, my room was right at the front of the house, so like this sort of setup used to be my room. And then anyway, I was about, I'd only been asleep for about half an hour. It was about 11 o'clock and the light was on in the hallway and um, I probably should have turned that off, but lucky I didn't because then all of a sudden I kind of hear my, see a light come into my room and the bedroom door coming open and I thought it was my housemate and I thought like maybe he's coming in from whatever and he's just come to say hi because I don't think I'd seen him since he'd come back. But I thought it was a bit weird. So I thought maybe something's up, maybe he's sick, maybe whatever, like we're good friends and um, maybe he's drunk and he wants, he used to come have drunken chats with me. So I was like, okay, he's coming for a drunken chat and I, then I see a hoodie and then I see jeans and I'm like, he wouldn't have his hood up. Yeah, yeah. And then I see an arm reach across my bed and uh, yeah, someone was in our house Jesus. and my laptop and computer on the other side of the bedroom yeah. and uh, they were obviously trying, you know, like I was thinking they were going to murder me or rape me. Like was yeah. the first thing that always comes into your head, but they were obviously going for that. Yeah. And I stupidly jumped up and screamed and ran and was screaming to my housemate that already ransacked the house. Yeah. But, like, they'd done that in that half an hour I'd gone to sleep. And um, then after that, I could not sleep yeah. for months. Yeah. Like, any sound. We had to sleep in the lounge room together. And we had to end that house until I moved into another house with Sean where our bedrooms were upstairs and we're away from things. It took a very long time. Mm. So what would you do in a scenario where you have, like, a situation like that happen with me? What is the best thing to do when you're just, like, I couldn't even go to work because I just mm. wouldn't sleep properly and then my 5 a.m. clients would get a zombie yeah. walking in. I mean, it's a bit of a difficult question to answer really and you've just got to kind of remember that that's, uh, how often is that going to happen? Yeah. It's, it's one, in, one in a million or whatever the statistic is, but it's very low. Um, I guess it's um, it's going to be a security thing. If someone's invaded your house, which is meant to be your private place, right, private yeah. space, my suggestion would be getting a lock on your room. Mm. Yeah. Well, I got a, I got a yeah. security system installed yeah. and I got Buffy the dog. dog. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah that's dog. it. All those things, get yourself a dog or increase yeah. security. Because when he went room. back to work, yeah. that was when I couldn't sleep. Yeah. Because I was like, well, he's gone now and I made a few girlfriends sleep over yeah. and things because I was single. But yeah, definitely getting the security system helped ease my mind yeah. a lot because it had an alarm on it and as soon as one of the doors went, it went off. Yeah. Um, but then, yeah, I think the next step would have been to get a lock, an yeah. internal lock on the door. And that's always been something I've always kind of liked in mm-hmm. bedrooms now for that specific reason like, yeah, yeah, yeah. but yeah I think you have something like that and you just have to do something about it really like, and if you continue to have anxiety and you can't get to sleep and you end up getting insomnia then cognitive, mm. cognitive behavioural therapy for insomnia which psychologists can, can a clinical psychologist can conduct and that has been proven to be beneficial even 10 years later yeah I've got a big strong man now so yeah. <laughs> uh, send me big. and I've got two dogs <laughs> <laughs> yeah. the two dogs because I'm dogs not that are, big. the dogs are very good alarms now because yeah. I know if they bark with someone there so 
So it's, a, it's a, yeah, it's a big tip for people that are a bit scared. You scare a dog. Like if you're, you know, 100%. even if they're useless like Buffy, like yeah. they <laughs> actually, the just the noise. Because she's yeah. any little thing. If we hear her bark in the night, we know <laughs> something's going on outside. Yeah. Um, so yeah, awesome. All right, we better wrap it up there because yeah. we're at two hours. Two hours. <laughs> so our sleep's going to be fabulous tonight. Yeah. But um, thank you so, so much. It was like, I feel like we could have talked for hours. Yeah. And I feel like, you know, we can definitely have you on again if we get some more it'd be cool to do like maybe some case studies where rather than just like questions people give us like actual more information because yeah, i guess yeah. it's a bit hard um so maybe we'll do that so what you guys can do is if you've got like if you are a really bad sleeper and you think you've tried everything then yeah. maybe send in an email um to me um so to info at alice and send in your problems and maybe we can do a bit of a short episode that's like a actual proper like case study we picked three and we like really delve into them yeah. um that'd be a great idea you know we can even do something fun like get you on the phone you know that's it yeah, yeah. Ask a few questions. i'm always happy to support yeah. you know, clients that you have that have sleep issues so. and what's the if they really need help as well with it one-on-one is there a way they can do like a consultation with you or a sit down or how does that kind of work yeah. so um i'm just waiting for my permanent residency visa to come through oh and yeah I'm same gonna, with this one so yeah, yeah. <laughs> and so i'm hoping within the next month to a couple of moments so I'm going to be then be able to take on clients where cool. I can do personal consultations yeah uh, I've got a little concept called performance through health mm-hmm. um, which is basically trying to take people back to the three pillars of health the sleep nutrition and the exercise and then help promote performance mindsets cool. um, that's your Instagram isn't it yeah so that's it? Like performance through health um, yeah, at performance through health yeah, yeah at the moment it's very early days yeah. but I'm hoping to then build a website and start you know, I might even come to you guys with the coaching code yeah. you know, it's, it's one of those things I'm trying to get into but sleep is obviously an area that for me that's why we haven't slept watching a program yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah exactly but, but for me it's what makes, separates me from other Absolutely. people is that yeah. I have that ability to help people with their sleep and I'm more than happy to help people. You know, yeah. they drop me a message. My email is performance through health at gmail. Yeah, maybe well. we'll do some, you know, some form of collaborating. You know, where we, you know, refer our clients when that's the issue. Because yeah. that's what we like to do. Like we have a, um, you know, a NLP therapist yeah. that works with us because Jace, you know, Jace, yeah, yeah, yeah. you yeah, know, and when we have bigger issues like eating disorders and things like yeah. that, then that goes to him or a psychologist. Mm, yeah. You know, I think this sort of health industry. You're not going to know everything, no. and it's important to stay in your lane and kind of like refer out. And that's yeah. what we're why we want to have people on this podcast to yeah, really yeah. show like you can know a bit about everything, but there's going to be people that are going to be more so specialized in certain that's things. It. Like I can tell someone to not have their phone in their room, but it doesn't make me a spe- sleep specialist, yeah, you know? Yeah, yeah, like yeah. Yeah. And it's the same with you know areas of nutrition for other people. So I think it's like you know what my special would be more so working with females and hormones and fixing metabolisms and mm. fertility and all of that whereas like you it's you know strength and conditioning and like it doesn't mean you know nothing about hormones but it's yeah, just yeah. like yeah. we all know a bit of everything but we've got areas that that's are that's it and I'm not going niche. to bring in down that, that sleep and that reducing that stress to then yeah. be able to perform better from people that who are you know Go, 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 go. Okay, let's take a chill. Let's take a step yeah. back. Maybe you can go. take me on board. There yeah. you go. <laughs> yeah. You can um, do the case study. Yeah. But for the people who are looking for the, the nitty gritty of science yeah. behind it as well, I, I am hoping to You're do maybe some, You can some, tell. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm hoping to do some lectures as well. So, cool. Yeah, some, awesome. Some lectures on sleep and the science behind it. That'd be cool. I mean, if you guys are keen, yeah, we do like a workshop or something and, you know, tie in mindset and sleep and yeah. nutrition and those variables. So I think that'd be really cool. And, you know, like we said, we're always happy to you know work with others in the health and fitness industry that are as passionate as what we are so we really appreciate you coming on and yeah hope Thanks to have imagine. you back on again or Thanks do for two hours of your time no, yeah. no worries I'm, no, I'm great now Sean has to feed you what's for dinner yeah. Thai green curry lovely yeah no, thanks for having me on it's uh no you guys have got a bit more of an audience I am being new to the to the country so it's been excellent for me just bring you in yeah go and follow him go and uh comment on the old Instagram you know slide in the DMs <laughs> get, get him some questions and yeah drop me drop me a message certainly yeah yeah so thank you so much what I'll do is I'll pop um probably like your Instagram and maybe your best email address below um in the info on instagram and stuff like that and in the itunes so thank you guys for listening to another episode really really appreciate you listening for the whole two hours if you got to hear and should (laughs) have and yeah drop us any questions thank you so much again for being on and we'll chat to you in the next episode of bodies barbells and see you guys see ya